Ready to go live. We are, live. we are live. We are live. Who's dancing is live. We're back. Showtime. We're back folks. from our hiatus. Isn't this just we? one long hiatus? It pretty much is, yeah. Right. I think it is. I think it's I thought we long... were in reruns for all summer. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, interesting you say that. This is essentially one big rerun. It really this is. is. It is just oh, okay. it, it's just never ending. So how are you guys doing? We are good. Yeah? Doing good. Well, we have another special guest this we time do. around for our show. Our dear friend Raj Sabarwal, aka Whiskey Raj on Twitter of Glass Revolution Imports. And he's going to give us a guided tour of Amrut. That's in India. I know. We can't go to India right now. Dude, we they got, don't even I allow got, us. American I got gigabit brand. service. I can go anywhere I want. <laughs> so it's a virtual <laughs> guided tour. It's virtual. We're not really going there. <laughs> No, we're not. We're not really, really, really. It's Raj. It's the next so step. He's going to guide us through four whiskeys. Uh, we've got the well, – well, well, we'll save that for when he comes on. So we've got four whiskeys, all Amrut, a couple of very special ones that we've never had before. And mm -hmm. he's going to tell us about the whiskey. He's going to tell us about the distillery and what makes them special. We already know Raj is special. We know. Now, here's the question. If I bring him in, do you think he's going to be like mid-chew? mid, mid like chew? He okay. may be still <laughs> scarfing on those uh, be on the, uh, the hob buffet. Maybe out of the yes. green room. I don't I know. Mean, the green tough. room. I mean, I kind of feel bad to pull him away from the hummus. And well, the, he has uh, to walk from down the hallway. Remember, it's, that's you know, true. All right, so should we start the, the intro room. and then we'll bring him in? Sure. Well, let's do a little thingy here. Hang on. Oh, you know what? Do I have music? You know, sometimes I'm I'm very professional and sometimes I'm not. All right, I'm never professional. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Timpani, please. <laughs> Aha! Audio is nice. Audio will be nice. All right, we're back. All right, we're going to bring him in. We're going to start the music. And drum roll. Look at that. We got a little intro, a little music. Look at that. It's so pretty. It really is. So this is what we're tasting, folks. Pretty bottle. Oh, that's a nice bottle. Hey, hey, Rush. hey, Rush. hey I, what is up? I told you guys no green M and M's. <laughs> you know, the bull. I think the rider. The 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 uh, ride. Uh, your showrunner screwed it up. It was just green. Well, that's I say, no green. I I'm, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, the I'm, kid. I'm ready to leave. You know, it's just a <laughs> really disappointing. You just start. got here. <laughs> Come on, the 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 table, table. He punched yeah. the walls. <laughs> we can't pull you away just, from that lamb. Hope it yeah, well, the lamb was the lamb was great. Oh, you know, and good? uh yeah, and Michael's uh, hummus, uh, great as usual. Thanks for the fresh baked ba bagels, though. Those are anytime, delicious. anytime. I do that yeah. every Saturday. <laughs> I have to. It was on Saturday, so they're they're like four days old now. Well, no, right? no, no. They're, 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 they're somewhat like fresh. fresh. They're like they're fresh. like fresh. They're like there you go, there you go. Exactly. So what have we got going on, sir? How are you? know, whiskey. Great, Mike. How are you? Uh, whiskey. Is Mike frozen? Whiskey, I think. Frozen. Oh, Mike is I think, frozen. Uh, he's had, Mike's had too much whiskey. He's Already? He's, uh, We've been yeah. here two minutes. Uh, I think he's like Frosty the Snowman. He has to wait for the <laughs> uh, the sun to let him free or something. So Should have paid his cable bill. Should have well, he's you off know. off-site right now. So Yes, he's off-site. He's way yeah. off-site. He's way <laughs> off. So right, how so you doing, Raj? And put him back in? I'm like? great. I'm great. Uh, here in the... Uh, Southeast, uh, lovely North Carolina, where uh, it's uh, it's been in the 90s all week, and, and it's going to continue that way. Um, have you left at all through all this? Have you been in the state the whole time? I have been in the state the whole time. Last, uh, I came back from Ireland on March 10th, and I have not been on a plane since then. Wow. Uh, I've not been out of state. Um, you know, it's just for me that's really unusual. I mean, I've been vicariously or virtually out of state by doing different tastings things uh, across the country and internationally, um, talking to people internationally, but, you know, <laughs> staying at home, staying safe. You know? How much did you have to cancel? How much did you have scheduled? A lot. You know, it was there was a lot. I mean, it was just ironic that uh, I came back from uh, Ireland like two days before they locked, you know, Ireland down. Uh, when my brother and I were there, uh, you know, every day they kept saying, oh, there's these number of cases, this number of cases. And 
I'm just thinking, oh man, I, you know, this is this is going to explode. And back back then, we weren't getting the numbers in the U.S., or at least they weren't being reported. You know, but once I came back, then everything sort of shut down. So, yeah. wow. Well, but, you know, it's uh, I'm, yeah, yeah. But I'm finding doing these virtual tastings are are great because you get you know you get more quality time with people. Um, I'm on there is you know, that an hour. What's that? <laughs> that <what> this is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, with quality, I, I should have said quality. You know, quality. You you define quality as as it's so. all relative. It's, it's good, all relative. It's good Wi-Fi. So, I understand. Yeah, yeah. But you know, just uh, just you know, with with twenty five, thirty people for an hour and a half, uh, you know, going through five, seven, eight whiskeys. Um, you know, it's a it's a lot. You get a lot more out of that than being behind the table at a whiskey show for three hours, where sure. maybe you get to talk to somebody for thirty seconds or a minute. You know, and then they move on to something else, but. Uh, this way, it's pretty captive, pretty intimate, and and uh, you know a lot more ex- interchange going on. I th- I think it's been interesting uh, being able to talk to people from other countries this way. And yeah. we were I was at a port asking tasting over the weekend, oh, yeah. and the the brand ambassador was in Scott, uh, Glasgow at the time, and it was on mm-hmm. a Sunday afternoon, I think Saturday afternoon. It was great. You know that wouldn't happen unless you're going to whiskey festivals or going to Glasgow. This is it's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, it's, uh, you know, and I, I think this is probably here to, I don't see this going away. I mean, I think even when travel restrictions are lifted, um, I think there's a lot of benefit from this. And uh, I think people are, are going to look forward to, to, you know, really, you can, you don't have to drive anywhere. Uh, you know, you can, you can imbibe as you please at home and or wherever you are. Um, and, um, you know, just, have a, be very comfortable and relaxed. Yeah, you know, I, and, you, and you don't have to wear pants. I mean, I guess none of you are wearing <laughs> pants, so you're okay. March, right? March 10th tell. was the last day I wore pants. I will never tell. March 10th. <laughs> I must admit, I have not worn a watch since March 10th. Uh, <laughs> well, nor I have, have I used cash. You know, I just I, uh, that's true. I can't cash, remember yeah. using cash. You know, I, uh, yeah. I the only commodity what, is whiskey. Like. The only uh, yeah, trading exactly. bartering system here. Speaking of bartering, exactly. Exactly. Speaking of bartering yeah. you were kind enough to send us four lovely samples and a pretty glass and a pretty. Is Angel Share the glass or is it is it this? Is well, this Angel Share is the company that makes those, and the glass right there. And right? the uh, the plinth that it's on is actually a barrel stave. Okay, yeah, well, uh, I figured that that uh, was there, but. Uh, yeah, they're all hand blown. There was only uh, we only had a hundred made. Whoa! Um, oh, so we're we're like limited so, edition. Wow! Very yeah, nice. very nice. Yeah. And gla- Omri glass with it, and some of them have the angel on it, and some of them have the uh, wow. pot still on there. I yeah. like that it has the angel on it because yeah. you know it's my namesake. Yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And we'll when we get to the last whiskey, the greedy angels, we can talk about uh, angel share and. How uh, how it really affects things in India? Definitely, sure. Yeah, look at that. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Do you got your Snoopy stack? Are the Scooby snacks there? That's what that's, I want to know. That's great. All right, should we do a little intro from your uh, distillery manager? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you repeat his name again? I'm sorry. Ashok Chukalingam. Ashok. He's the distillery uh, ma- the head of distilling. Uh, and the global global sales director, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Bangalore is in another ten day lockdown that went into place on Monday because they were on a forty five day. India in itself was on a forty five day lockdown, and they lifted that. And then uh, just last week, they saw a spike in Bangalore, so the government ordered uh, a ten day lockdown, which means you can't leave your home. Hmm. Right, Here's a show. Hello, everyone. Yeah, I understood you have a nice lineup of whiskeys today uh, to be hosted by Ross Silverwall. I'm pretty sure that you will enjoy that, uh, especially the Greedy Angel and, and the Kadambam is a real winner. Um, and of course, our regular classic single malt and pure is like a any day fantastic whiskey. So have a wonderful night. Stay safe. And enjoy your life. Thank you. Bye. Very nice. That's cool. There you go. That's very cool. Okay, where do you want to start, Rush? 
Well, since Ashok mentioned the classic single malt, uh, the Amrut uh, classic, because I think what we wanted to do tonight was really uh, talk about things that make um, Amrut unique. So I stayed, stayed away from the peated whiskeys only because um, you know, the, it's not Indian barley. They're getting the peated barley from Scotland. So I figured we'd focus on everything that uh, is barley grown in India. So the classic single malt. It's 100% Indian barley that grows up in the north of India, um, in Punjab and Rajasthan. And uh, it's a different strain of barley than what's used in Scotland because it's a six row barley than two row. So if I can geek out for a minute, that just means that you get smaller granules and you're getting a lower yield because you know you have uh, small granules of barley. Um, you actually get more protein from it than, than uh, carbohydrates. So it's actually better for you. You know, that's, uh, that's, better that's what we say. So, yeah, as, as you all know, our, the name Amrud comes from uh, the Sanskrit word meaning nectar of the gods or the elixir of life. So, uh, you know, drinking this will give you eternal life. Excellent. Hey, will it grow hair? Uh, it, if you rub it on your head, Andrew. Rub it. It well, oh, well, that's a waste of whiskey, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Aaron I'm not gave getting... up. I think Aaron's going to I gave up, up long ago. <laughs> yeah. He only goes here now. <laughs> that's uh, that's because you you dribble right. Drinking <laughs> that's <stress>. right. That's <laughs> it. Well, it works. <laughs> you know, he used to play basketball, right? So you're like a there burglar from way back. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So uh, uh, 40, uh, 46 percent or ninety two proof, uh, non chill filtered, uh, all natural color. Um, Amrit ages. It's traditional single malt in a combination of new American oak and ex bourbon barrels. And uh, they like to use uh, Jim Beam barrels. Uh, that's their preference, but they also have some other bourbon barrels around that they use. Um, but uh, just this gorgeous color that comes out of here, uh, you know, all natural. Um, you're getting a lot of the vanilla and, and uh, spice notes. I don't know what else you guys are picking up, but I always get vanilla and ginger and uh, a little bit of malted, malted chocolate. It has like a, like, I mean, you could kind of smell almost like the grain, like sort of a it's nutty, grainy, yeah. real quality. Yeah. 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 Would Biscuit. that be the malt? Is that yeah. more or less? That would be know? the malt. That would, yeah, that would be the malt. And, and um, you know, they, so the, the barley, as I said, grows up in the north, um, is malted in Delhi, and then makes its 1,200 mile journey from Delhi down to Bangalore, where the distillery is, where everything else is done. The uh, mashing, just uh, fermenting, distilling, aging is all done in Bangalore. Is this the biggest seller? This um, this is their original whiskey. So this is the single malt that they released in 2004. Um, they were making this before. Um, this was the biggest seller before Fusion was released. And we'll, we'll do Fusion next. But uh, this, uh, you know, in I think last year, we started selling in the U.S. at least uh, as much single malt as fusion. So, and before that, it was fusion that was selling the most. We're going in. Go in. I am. Go in deep. Delicious. So, Raj, nineteen forty-eight. What's the, and 2004 was the first release of single malt, right? The first export of single malt. So uh, 1948 was when the distillery started, you know, 47, and they regained, uh, regained the country from the British. Prior to that, they had to, uh, you know, everything was imported. Um, probably the Indian love of whiskey, and, and, you know, India is the largest per capita consumer of whiskey in the world. Uh, in fact, uh, just today, they were releasing the statistics of the top 10 selling uh, spirit brands in the world. And among the top five, there are four Indian whiskeys. That's uh, crazy. Well, yeah, but all of those are just consumed domestically, right? Because India, you know, when you have over a billion people and even if, let's say, even 300 million drink, uh, you know, that's, that's still a lot. I mean, the average, I think the average consumption is six, uh, 600 liters per person. If you split it into 
That's a lot. Total pipe. Whoa. How much again? 600 liters? 600 liters per person of alcohol, but not everyone drinks, right? So you, right. you know you have to you have to discount for that. Um, <laughs> but the ones that do like whiskey a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but you know, I mean, bear in mind that a lot of what is sold as whiskey in yeah. India is not would not be considered whiskey uh, in other places in the world because it tends to be made from uh, a neutral, usually molasses spirit. Uh, that's distilled, and then they'll have some uh, imported whiskey, usually Scotch or Canadian whiskey, added to it, or some uh, domestically produced malt or grain whiskey before it's uh, sold as whiskey. Um, and it's relatively inexpensive, right? It is, yeah. The only grain whiskey is and molasses is because India is the biggest producer of sugarcane in the world, so a lot grow. But uh, but Amrit decided in the seventies they started making single malt um mostly the use in their higher end uh whiskey that they sold called mac q or mac so mq sorry m m q i n t o s h uh, which they still produce um but what happened in the 80s a lot of the scottish distilleries started coming into or scottish companies started coming into india and um they decided the way to really get into the market was to produce a cheaper spirit so um they had imported whiskey but they started putting more grain into it rather than malt uh and to be able to sell it cheaper and all of a sudden people were going oh this is you know this is good this is cheap i'm gonna buy this so Amrit was left with all the single malt that they were producing and they didn't know what to do with um, and you know through the 90s they sat on and that you know that wasn't only in india i mean uh the a lot of the blends from Scotland, same thing. I mean, if you if you take a blend from the 30s or 40s or 50s and compare it to today, so even a Johnny Walker black or red, it is so different than uh, what it is like what it was like back then. You know, it had more malt in it than than what it has today. So. This is very nice. I haven't had this in a while. Yeah, cut a, cut a good bit of fusion, but this is like a nice everyday dram. It's a it it it's lovely. It's a really elegant whiskey. Uh, you know, even at that ninety two proof or forty six percent, it's really well integrated. Very round in the mouth. Uh, lots of good flavor notes in it. Just saying. I think I have a bottle that came from India. Man. Yeah. Uh, this is the also, I'm getting I'm getting a little background noise. Me too. Here. Get some background noise too. Some yeah. voice in the background, somebody? Let's let's find out. Hold on. Did it stop? Yes. Yeah. Well, Mike is in uh a thousand <laughs> square feet with five people. Oh uh, yeah. we, little, we, go. we gotta go. give him a little okay. leeway. Okay. So Raj, I get this bottle that a, so a friend brought back. It's the peated version, and it's forty two point eight. Yeah, so in India, uh, domestically, 42.8 is the, the highest. Well, they usually do 42.8, and, and where 42.8 comes from, it is the equivalent of 75 British proof. Um, and the British use a different proofing system than the right. U.S. does. So, you know, 57.1 is actually 100 British proof. Okay. Yeah, so, and 42.8 is 75, and that's what a lot of things traditionally are sold at. Um, so even domestically, like stuff that gets exported, obviously gets at the higher strength. And uh, Omrit has to get special permission from the government to be able to sell at a higher uh, alcohol strength. Huh, interesting. And they pay more taxes on it and everything else, so. It looks so strange. Yeah. The number's so small. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's yeah, that's where it comes from. So, and it'd be interesting, Aaron, to compare that to the U.S. version of the peated. Oh to yeah. See, you know, because I think at that lower alcohol strength, it really loses the the peat character mm -hmm. in that particular one. But uh, yeah. So, any, uh, what do you what do you think? What do you, you know, if you were tasting this blind? And I know for a number of you, it's been a while since you had it. Um, you know, not that I do anything about age or, or on a harp on age, but how old do you think this would, this is? Well, or we know it's young because it's an emerald and it's hot there and the whiskey age is faster. But that being said, I mean, it could be like an eight to 10 year old whiskey. Yeah. I, you know, I comparable just, to like an eight to 10 year old. Somewhere between five and 10 for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's four years old. 
I mean, it's got wow. some fire to it. Yeah. It's got some heat. It's all kind of mm. like, you know, from the middle of my tongue to like the front. But it's nice. So when, when Amrit, uh, when the current managing director, uh, he was doing his MBA at University of Newcastle in uh, 2003, 2004. And uh, his dad had said to him, you know, why don't you do your thesis on whether or not we could sell uh, Indian single malt to the rest of the world. Um, so they went to Glasgow to a, a, a famous whiskey bar in Glasgow and had the bar owner pour the um, single malt for guests and say, don't tell them where it's from. We just want to get the reactions of people. And people were saying, oh, it's a Highland. It's a space side. You know, it's uh, it's 15 years old. It's 12 years old. It's whatever. And uh, at the end of the night, when he told them what it was, they were like, no way. It can't be. There's no way this is from India. There's no way this is, you know, this. So they figured, you know what? People uh, people seem to enjoy it. So I think we'd be able to uh, to sell it. That's funny. What bar well, was I mean, that? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, Potstill. The name of it. Potstill. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it was on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. Speaking of Potstill, do you want to show the little tour of the distillery? Oh, great! Sure. Idea. Why don't we do that? Want to do that? Because uh, Aaron was little... complaining about not going to India before, so yeah, and not, India. and not getting out of Southern California forever. Oh, you know, he just likes to complain. So I'm just a whiner. <laughs> he is a whiner. He I'm puts, a whiner. Yeah, yeah. But he likes whiskey and not really wine, so that's yeah. interesting. That's true. Uh, Very true. Let's see where we he's, not a, he's not a whiskier. No, I'm a whiner. <laughs> he whisks. Do you do like a nice meringue, maybe? <laughs> I do yeah. like a nice little meringue. A yeah, little, yeah. maybe a little fresh mayo. Oh, okay. All right. Ready? Yeah. Nice. How many employees are there, Raj? Um, they they employ about three to four hundred people. Wow. Uh, they, uh, you know, you can see the manual labor. So, you know, they're not. They can automate all that, but uh, Neil, who founded the distillery, was adamant that uh, you know they be good employers and employ a lot of local people. Yeah, wow. there is. Uh, so they're recharging the barrels. Uh, recharging the barrels. Yep. Wow. Now, do they do the same thing where they break them down and put them back together again, like in Scotland? They or? don't. When they break them down and put them back together, they don't re rechar it. They'll rechar it after I think two or three uses uh, to get another another couple of uses out of it, and and usually that's used for second or third maturation rather than first maturation. Three or three three hundred to four hundred employees. That's a large distillery. That is. It is. I mean, what you the picture you saw it actually is a newer distillery. Um, they built uh, a year and a half ago. They built a second distillery next to the first one, which is only for distilling malt. Um, I mean, Amrit makes a lot of other things. They make rum was the first product they ever made in in the late 1940s, early 1950s, and uh, their Old Port rum is actually the seventh largest selling rum in the world. Uh, wow. So, yeah, <laughs> they. Uh, it uh, had a 38% increase uh, in, in sales from 2018 to 2019. So it'll probably push 2 million wow. cases this year. Um, and so that they, they have their own brandy because they have their own vineyards. And there's a domestic uh, grape called Bangalore Blue that they used to make brandy from. Uh, they make a couple of rums. They obviously make vodka, gin, uh, and then whiskey. So it's a, it's a you know fairly large operation. They are probably the main... Main distillery in in Karnataka, the state where Bangalore is. There's a couple of other distillers there, but um, you know, the quality is certainly there, and the uh, uh, what they offer to the uh, the public is is top notch. Are the other uh, uh, expressions, the gins and the vodkas and the rums, available outside of India? They are not currently. The gin uh, we're discussing bringing it in. Uh, they're still working on the final version of it. Uh, I was I tasted it when I was there in February, uh, having had it before in August, and I I'm still trying to insist that it has more sort of Indian character, and I want them to use some more Indian botanicals, um, you know, cardamom, uh, 
maybe a little, you know, a couple of other things that would add some Indian characters to it. Saffron, stuff like that. Yeah. So it, hopefully next year we will have the uh, the gin here. Yeah. We need a chai uh, spirit for me. I'm a chai. Yeah, that, uh, I, that's funny because I've been, talking, I, I've been talking to them for years about doing uh, an Indian spiced rum and Ooh, some chai not? spices in there. <clears throat> so, you know, that's, that's on, that, on the drawing table. Is that something they don't do now? They do not. Do not. No. Well, that sounds great. Yeah. He's all in. I'm all in. <laughs> I love the chai. customer. I love the chai. There you go. You got to start there. So hopefully, hopefully we'll do that. So, so shall yeah. we uh, go on to number two? We move on fusion. to the fusion. Yeah, let's all right. Do the fusion. fusion. Sam is having uh, fusion. Uh, Sam's got the fusion. I think he ran out and got it or something. So <laughs> I got, I got the, I got the, the big boy version. So very nice. All right. I, I so, just reviewed this a while back. Was you gave us when we did the tasting at the Union League? Oh, that's right. That was. Ra, yeah, that was a couple years ago. Rob, yeah. uh, Rob, who, 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 you know, recruited you to come in and do a tasting. Right. I think he had all the bottles, so he divvied them up, and we all got to pick. So I picked the Fusion. Nice. I think What's Mike, uh, Sam asking down there? I don't know. What's Sam asking down here? Does I would make a go. product called Bangalore Torpedo? If they should cast. Oh, okay. There's all a right. question from Sam. What is that? Bangalore Torpedo. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, or is he, or is he doing product development and uh, he's doing product <laughs> development. Of his own home? Or is he drinking he's too much? The name. They did. You know, it's fun. It's funny because a couple of years ago they did something that had like a uh, a torpedo on it, showing um, some whiskey, and I can't remember which one it was. But there's nothing called Bangalore Torpedo. So, um, so the fusion is. Um, this is what really put Amrit on the map. So this was released in 2009. And um, it, that year, the Malt Maniacs uh, gave it the Best Daily Dram Award. And uh, then uh, Jim Murray in the Whiskey Bible uh, named it third best whiskey in the world, giving it 97 points. And uh, Whiskey Advocate named it World Whiskey of the Year. And it has continues to win awards every year. So this is my this is my first amber right here. This is okay. the first one I had. So fusion is called fusion because they uh, they take seventy five percent of the whiskey that we first had, and then twenty five percent of their peated single malt. They're made separately and then they're taken and married together and allowed to marry for about another six to nine months before it's bottled. So rather fused? than yeah, so rather than uh, that's right. So rather than mixing the different kinds of barley's in the uh, mash bill or distillation process, they make the whiskeys separately and then bring them back. Bring them back to marry together. And it's all in the same casks. That when it's after, heated, when it's after hot, after it's, and then together. Correct. So they're so the um, the whiskey itself, Mike, the single malt and the uh, peated the. For the single malt, they use a combination of new American oak and ex-bourbon. Ex uh, the peated is only in ex-bourbon barrels. So it all gets aged to, uh, separately, and then they'll take 75, 25, right. uh, marry it, uh, vat it together, put it into barrels for further uh, time to allow it to meld together and, and uh, get that great flavor profile. This is just so good. And and it kicks up a notch with that 50% ADD. Yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting because in, in 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 India it's forty two point eight. That's so a different. <laughs> oh, uh, weird. Different. Yeah. Yeah. No. Is yeah. there a big well, difference in flavor to you on the two? I, I think there is. Yeah, I, I definitely think there is. This, this one's I think better. I assume. Yeah. They, well, yeah. I think I I always think at higher alcohol you get more flavor. You know, because yep. you're not, obviously not adding water to bring it down. <laughs> um, you know the. Um, I was gonna say. You know, the cast drink whiskeys are a different story when, you know, if we get cat, I think the last one we're going to have the, the greedy angels is a, a higher alcohol, but you always get a lot more in there. And then when you get a cast drink whiskey, you can add as much or as little water as you want to get it to the level that you want. Right. Right. But I think Amrit, Amrit's sweet point is, is that 50% alcohol. I think that uh, a lot of their specialty releases like the Kata Bomb, which we're going to have next, um, the um, 
some of the other ones they've done are, are at 50 percent and, and i think that that's sort of a nice level that they they tend to play at and the nice thing the interesting thing about fusion is you don't get a lot of like peat on the nose no no it's all no, no. very no. it's very subtle if you get any it's very subtle and, and you don't get the vapors either it doesn't seem no. like it's 50%. no it's very approachable no. It is. And the finish, the finish has just a little bit of that peat, but it, it's again subtle. But it's a, it's a nice, long, pleasant finish. Mm -hmm. it, it, and the, the nose is, is a lot richer yeah. than the the, the um, standard issue amrut. Yeah, much richer. I mean, you get like a good bit of like maybe dark brown sugar, get a little clove, and a lot more of the vanilla. Mm, that's very nice. Yeah, I like this. But one. I think you get you, you certainly get that smokiness at the back of the yeah. throat. Yeah. Um, you know the on, on the back of the tongue, down the throat, and stuff like that. But it's it's a sweet smoke. It's almost like a a barbecue sauce, a, a you know a pork belly or, or mm. along that line. Mm. As Mike would say, if you don't have any, don't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. So this, uh, and I think this is just a oh, you are a lovely, there. lovely whiskey. Mike needs a napkin. Starting to, starting to drool a little. He's drooling yeah. a little bit over there. You guys, yeah, this is. I got, I took my sample from the, my can here. Ah. Amber does the best little booklet in their packaging. You get yeah. this really cool booklet of all of the different uh, whiskeys that they have, yep. and all the tasting notes. Um, it's really very interesting. I'm I'm not sure how current this one is, but uh, it's really neat. There's a newer version than that one, but that. Oh, is, here's the rum. Is, yep, that's the Oport rum. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and each of those. I mean, yeah, I was talking earlier about the number of people they employ. So each of those brochures get hand put into the cans after the bottles are put in, wow. and then the tops of the canisters are are put in by hand. And there, it's the, the packaging is beautiful. It's, I yeah. mean, the yeah, the new. I really like the new bottles. Uh, you know, they 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 finally uh, a couple of years ago they went to their own bottle mold, so. Has the emerald on it? Has a nice uh, shape on there. Top of it's really lovely. Nice uh, little base for it to sit yeah. on. Uh, the labels got uh, upgraded. Um, yeah, so it's just a, a really nice job. Even even the mini cans they went out of yeah. the yeah. yeah. yep. the minis. Uh, there's no skimping, you know. Yeah, all all five of the core range are available in the minis. Yeah. Oh, that's um, very cool because a lot of yeah. companies do not do that. No, no. Yeah, no, they they do it, and and it's not you know it's not a money maker. I mean, they don't no. make any money on it. We don't make yeah. any money on it. It's just uh, we use it a lot for sampling, but it's uh, it makes lovely stocking stuffers or yeah. anything else at uh, you know holiday time. Can you tell my kids that, please? Yeah. <laughs> they won't listen. <laughs> You know, you, the fusion really like almost approaches like a bourbon. Oh, yeah, interesting. You know, I yeah. could see like a bourbon yeah. drinker would really like this. Yeah. Like I can't see how they wouldn't. Hmm. You don't you know? think the uh, the smoky or peaty character? Would I don't find it particularly off? smoky. I mean, but you know, we're used to drinking Kalila and Lafroy. I mean, this isn't smoky compared to those. Fire see, this is to me, yeah, this is to me is like a, a Talisker or a, maybe a Jura uh, with that yeah. level of peat in there. You know. It's pretty low. It's not heavily peat, but it's low. But it's uh, is it highland? It's really peat? nicely balanced. We, is it what? Sorry, highland peat. It is highland peat. Yeah, yeah. The barley so is real... peated. No, barley is peated in Inverness at Baird Malting. Oh, Baird. Uh, so it's all it's all inland uh, inland malt uh, peat that's being used. Yeah. Has uh, Emirat ever uh, uh, used non highland peat in anything? Um, they experimented. Yeah, they experimented a number of years ago with doing their own malting and, and importing some peat from uh, Isla to do that. But the cost of it and the labor intensity. Uh, you know, the problem with uh, problem with India or Bangalore especially is, you know, when you're malting stuff, you have to have the right humidity and the right temperature. Because if, uh, if it's too dry, you're not going to be able to get that malt quality. If it's too right. damp, you're not going to be able to get it. Um, so you need that right amount on there. Uh, there we go. The, Fusion tasting notes. Yeah. Well, you know, I almost get like maybe so, like um, uh, from some, a bit more like tobacco, almost like a yeah. pipe tobacco. Yeah, pipe tobacco. More yeah. so than like a very you know, mellow like, type. More than like a maritime note or a peat. Right. It's more that end of the spectrum. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. 
That's yeah, really it's interesting. Good. I don't know if you ever had a number of years ago. They did one called Two Continents, where it was aged in India first, and then the the whiskey was taken to uh, a secret European location for further aging. Um, and that that maritime aging process really gave it that saltiness and and like uh, solidity, right? A little solidity, a little uh, you know the uh, uh, a little more smokiness that came out of there, and it was really interesting. They they did that. There should be another two continents coming out, uh, hopefully next year. Yeah. Nice. So what do you think of this fusion? You've had you guys have all had the fusion before. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Like I said, it's I took the bottle. I took one. the bottle from Rob from the tasting from the uh, tasting of the blind yeah. did, and that first, was just really really good. The first whiskey tasting I ever went to was with Raj in Pasadena. Oh yeah. A million years ago, and this is the first time I had this. You're really old. I am really old. Oh, he does. Well, what's Raj then? He was a child <laughs> when he was doing it. He was like nine. Look at that. Look at that. He's frozen in time. So I take him out? Was that bring the him back? one, Aaron? Was that the one? There was like He's 50 frozen. people there or something? Was that? Uh, it was no, it was smaller, but it was in a bar. And it was, I just remember it was oh, like we were on right, one right, right. side of the bar and it was really yep. loud. And you were yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. having to yell ish to the, all of us yes. sitting down. And it was yes. a very strange. Uh, what was, it, was that? Oh, I can't remember the name of the bar. I want to say like the Blind Donkey or yes, Everson. Yes. It was around the corner from Everson Royce, I think. That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah. They actually they put it together. It was a Blind Donkey, and then I remember we went to some burger place after that. Yes, where they right, had right next bacon, door. Nearby. Bacon in the burger, and yeah, and it was extra a, bacon. It was yeah. I don't know if I yeah. if that place is still there or not. That's funny. Know, Everson Royce is still there, of course. Yes, mm. yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Long right. time ago. That was a long time ago. Hey, uh, so I just actually added some water to this, and it's really interesting with water. Yeah, a little bit of water would do it. I mean, I think bringing it down to maybe uh, 48, 47 uh, percent, you know, just a few drops of water really does make a difference on there. Yeah, hey. it, it does change it a little bit. Speaking uh, of water. Well, yes, sir. Should we talk a little bit about the water that goes into ah. the water of life? Ooh. You know, that's, that's that interesting. A, a lot what of people I mean, before – before we go to this video, Ange, I just want to say that, yeah. you know, we, we often got get asked, uh, you know, probably less so now than we used to about, oh, what about the water in India? I mean, India's got crappy water. How is Amrit making whiskey with, you know, all this water? A bit, you know, I've heard that you can't drink the water. It's not safe, blah, blah, blah. So uh, in order to address that, we decided mm -hmm. we should show a video about where the water comes from. So... This is actually about two miles from the distillery. It's a private property that the family owns, um, and they have a very deep, uh, deep bore well that uh, an aquifer that the water gets pumped up from. Cool. Let's do this. Let's do this, as the kids would say. So here you are on the streets of Bangalore. Right, so we have a we have a bore wall. Uh, it's about 100, 150 feet below. We bought this land, as you can turn around, it's uh, full of coconut and mango orchard. And we are right beside the lake, so that's really about less than 50 meters. So because of that, the water table is so good, we get such a soft water with uh, a total dissolved solids of less than 150 which is, say, it's is soft water. So you drank it, it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And this is what we use it for single malt uh, processing. Just like. Interesting. So do they only use that water for single malt or do they use it for other? Oh, sorry. Oh, no, other, my bad, my bad. Other things in the distillery. They, uh, they use it for other things as well because they, uh, they have, um, Tankers that come up there and they get pumped full of the water and then it takes it to the distillery, uh, but mostly for the single malt production. And then it know, doesn't get purified any further. It's just you no. right, out of, right out of the ground. No, I mean we were drinking. We were actually literally drinking the water as it was coming up from there. Wow. Very clean and very clear. But I mean, regardless of that, you know, we have to remember that uh, water. Uh, even in Scotland, does not make a huge impact in whiskey because water is uh, 
you know, is, is distilled. It's it's heated before it goes into any other process. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's boiled and it's boiled to higher and higher temperatures as it goes to different steps. So the only time the water makes a difference is at the end when you're diluting the whis down. whiskey before proofing it down. Um, and I was joke because if you look at Scotland, um, even you know Diageo has most of its whiskey being stored in central warehouses in Glasgow, and they're all using the same water to proof it down. So they're not using the water at the distillery. Right, I mean, right. years ago when the distilleries were established, it made sense because you wanted a good, clean water source uh, because water back then wasn't clean or clear. And so you located on to uh, near a good source of water to, to use that in your distilling process. Well, it's going to be near the source of the water, right? You don't want to have to keep schlepping it right. <laughs> everywhere. Correct. You want it Correct. nearby because you need it for yeah. – Condens yeah, the, for the condensers and you need it for no, no absolutely you yeah, know my point is that the water in, in in whiskey you know there there was a point when the distilleries were arguing that a water you know water makes a difference water is such a key element in, right. in whiskey yeah. in it you know uh my only point is it's not yeah a couple years ago yeast was never a big factor and now yeast is right yeah water's gonna again be water. it depends it, it depends if you're using you know if you're using indigenous yeast or uh, or if you're just bringing yeast in, I mean, if you're just bringing yeast in and you're using brewer's yeast or distiller's yeast, you know, it, a lot of distillers use the same yeast. Yeah. Um, but you have some older distilleries that have uh, in, indigenous yeast that's that's there. It's it's uh, locally sourced, and and that you know that's proprietary, and that makes a difference. Yep. Yeah. So it's uh, and the barley makes a difference too. We'll uh, <laughs> we'll. we'll We'll talk about. I mean, there's a lot of con controversy about uh, whether or not um, there's terroir in whiskey, <laughs> and uh, I don't know if Robin got into that when when uh, he was a little bit. bit uh, a little <laughs> bit. Well, it's, it's definitely a lot. We got, into, we got into a lot. It's so funny how yeah. that conversation has it. It kind of goes and comes and goes and comes, and I think it's coming back again because of your friend. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that, it's going to uh, be a, that, it's going to be an ongoing conversation again because of Mark. yeah, and, and and so that's that's a topic for another time. Yep. But that uh, that will certainly uh, it it already has uh, instigated a lot of discussion, and uh, it will continue to do so. Yeah, and it, and it it doesn't ever go away. It seems like you know the guys at Westland and Bricklotty, and which I guess there's some lineage there, right? Yes, With Mark, but uh, yes. It, it doesn't it doesn't go away. It's a yep. it's an in interesting ongoing conversation. Yep. yep. And it, it all comes down to how you <clears throat> define terroir. I mean, are you defining it as the entire process or are you talking about the uh, uh, the raw material and the source of that and, and what terms that makes? Yeah. The, I think the, the word a, is sort of like a four letter word and people don't like it. And provenance seems to be another word that, you know, gets. E -R -R -O. <laughs> seven <laughs> seven I letters. Can't, seven. I can't count. I, I know this. Yeah. The West Coast Provenance, isn't big on math. Provenance, uh, terroir, and transparency. Those right. Are, oh, buzzwords. That, those are bigger <laughs> words. <laughs> Three things. I yeah. only have yeah. 10 fingers. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. So number, uh, number three. Fusion? Yeah, no, I love fusion. I mean, you can't, you just fusion was just, you can't, it was the one I fell in love with when I first had it. Oh, and, it's uh, I don't know how many bottles I've gone through that stuff. That's an excellent whiskey. It really is. You know, I mean, it you, is. Get, you get this. Now, what do you have? Ninety-seven from the Whiskey Bible. Yep. So it's, it's, it's very good. Bible yeah. ninety, ninety-six from uh, Mark Gillespie, I think. And uh, who's that? Uh, yeah, World that World guy. Whiskey of the Year. Oh, that I think guy. World Whiskey of the Year three times. Uh, and you said it was the number one seller for Emmer. It um, yes, it. Uh, I think now it's sort of keeping pace with the single malt. Um, you know, and and uh, it's you know the demand for it even domestically in in India, um, you know the demand is five times more than they can uh, supply. Wow! So they're they're ramping up, and and uh, you know we are the U.S. We're the single largest export market for Amrut, so you know they they count on us to sell a lot. So really, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. about a third of what they produce goes to the U.S. currently. Wow. Hmm. Is it no. big in um, uh, Asian markets as well? Yeah, uh, Japan, Taiwan, uh, China, 
Um, it's Europe is probably, you know, Europe's a pretty big market for them, mainland Europe. Um, and the uh, UK was the first market they were, they were in and it continues to be a big market, but, but Europe is more Germany, Italy, France, uh, huge markets for them. Hmm. Yeah. Is there a lot of single malt popularity actually in India? There's more and more coming. Um, you know, in the past, as I alluded to earlier, a lot of the whiskey that uh, was being sold, a lot of it's blends and a lot of it is is that neutral molasses spirit with some grain whiskey or, or malt right. added to it. But as, uh, as people travel, as they experience different things from around the world, the demand and love for single malts is starting to grow. So the the whole category is trying to escalate in, in India. Well, they had um, the um, One Nation Under Whiskey podcast. They were talking about something with Diageo. I think they said before single malts were 5% of the market. Now they've grown to 10% of the market for Scotch whiskey. Yes. Yep. So I, I imagine it's going yeah. across the board. It's yeah. not just going to be Scottish single malts that they're interested in. Well, you know, it's interesting because uh, there there's currently a push in India to uh, support domestic. And mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the last quarter, very little was ordered from uh, the foreign producers. Uh, you know, so a lot a lot of demand is turning to the uh, internet, the domestic producers. Uh, that's helping Amrud and, and uh, the other domestic producers. Are there rules yeah. in India like we have here in the States and in and like the SWA about what constitutes single malt over rum or whatever? That's a good question. There, there is an association of uh, Indian, of Indian whiskey producers that is trying to agree to things. One of the things that they still haven't finalized mm -hmm. is, you know, should it be one year, two years, three years, minimum aging. Um, Amrit, as you know, adheres to the SWA regulations and, you know, uses uh, oak barrels, 100% malt barley, minimum three years aging, uh, you know, but the other uh, other distilleries, you know, are saying, well, you know, we think in one year, two years, we can produce a decent single malt whiskey, so we shouldn't be hamstrung by that. And I think we're we're facing the same thing in the U.S. as well. Um, you know, the, the, there's an association in the U.S. for the U.S. single malt uh, producers, and they're trying to come to some kind of agreement about where, you know, what constitutes a single malt whiskey. Yeah. So I think we're, I think we'll see that coming up uh, sometime later. Yeah. Yeah. The American guys are, are been working on it for a while, but uh, yeah, they, have. they can't, yep. They can't figure out. Uh, I think, well, it's, it's less about the American producers. It's more about the government <laughs> and lobbying. Well, the government. Uh, I mean, I think if the association comes to an agreement, then there's, then they are in a better position to lobby the TTB to say that this is what, constitutes or defines an American single malt. Uh, but, you know, right now the TTB does not even have a definition of single malt whiskey. Yep. Uh, you know, they're, you know, they're, it's just stuff from Scotland. They have an agreement with Scotland that says they, whatever's labeled in Scotland has, it gets accepted here. Uh, you know, when we first started bringing Armored in, uh, in, in the 2009, I mean, it took me a year to get approval with from the TTB and, arguing with them about, you know, what it should be called because we had to send samples to the lab to get tested and def and declare how it was produced, what went into it. And they came back and said, oh, it's a, a straight malt whiskey. And I said, what the hell is a straight malt whiskey? You know, if I put that on a label, nobody's going to know what that is. And, uh, and they finally relented and said, okay, it's a malt whiskey. And yes, you can use the word single in front of it. <laughs> is it still an ongoing battle with them? No, in. it's not. It's uh, they've actually we don't we do no longer have to submit lab samples, um, and uh, now um, all we all I have to do is when I send in a label for approval, I just have to say that you know there's no flavor or coloring added to this. This is a natural product. That's fine. Crazy, yeah. Crazy. So you mentioned. Uh, what, 2009 you said when you first brought them in so well 2009 was when we st we started trying to bring it in and it was uh april 2010 was when we sold our first 
product in the U.S. So how did you develop the, the relationship with, with Amrit? Well, our uh, good question. Uh, my business partners uh, were operating in West Canada, uh, friends of mine from uh, some time ago, and they were selling Amrut in uh, Alberta, British Columbia, a few other provinces. So they and were they importing it already? Correct, to Canada. And they had started importing it, I think, in 2006 or seven. And then they called uh, called me and said, hey, Amrut's asking us about the U.S., and I had moved to the U.S. in 08, and uh, they they said, you know, we we'd always we'd always talked about going into business together, and so I said, oh, there, there's no good Indian whiskey. What are you talking about? You know, I, <laughs> as you know, I, when I was younger, I'd gone to India and, and with my cousins and stuff, and you know, drank whiskey, and I'm going like, okay, this is barely possible, but um, <laughs> but I went and tried uh, uh, Amrit. I flew up, tried it, and said, wow, this is good. Um, and then I flew, uh, Shok was living in London at the time. So I flew to London, met with him, uh, spent a couple of days. And then, then we went to India and negotiated the agreement to, uh, be the U S importer. And frankly, back in 2009, I had no idea how the business worked in the U S <laughs> you know, I had come from a totally different background, uh, spent 25 years in the corporate world, uh, doing you know, totally different. I certainly enjoyed whiskey and spirits and wine. Uh, you know, I was educated and knowledgeable in it, but uh, as far as the business side of it, you know, didn't know anything. You know, and it, it all started with like, okay, how do I, how do we get approval? How do we get distributors? Uh, you know, how do we, uh, you know, what do we have to do? Get approvals, you know, all of this stuff. And it was a big challenge. Was Amber your first big name on your in the portfolio it was our first first item yeah. first brand yeah um, it wow. was our first brand and then uh you know we um and then it was probably just the single malt and not even fusion then right oh well we fusion. were fortunate you know, we were fortunate aaron because it was 2010 before we got our first shipment and fusion had been released uh, so good timing we met we got yeah it was a really good timing because uh it had not been in canada yet and so we got in our first shipment, we ended up getting all of the five core products, including fusion. And, and that, you know, that's why we started getting play people calling us up and saying, Hey, you know, I mean, uh, Chris, Chris Uday from JBS. I remember him calling, I was going through an airport somewhere and it, the phone rang and it was like, Hey, this is Chris from JBS from California. And, you know, I, uh, I heard great things about Armory and I want to, I want it for California. And I go on. I don't know who you are, but <laughs> I'll, uh, you know, I'll talk to you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they've been a great supporter ever since. So, so what, uh, how, what's JVS? They're just your distributor out on the West Coast. My, our distributor for California. For California. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the U S system is we we are the importer and then we have to appoint distributors in every state. Um, and they, you know, they're the next tier. So we're the single source of bringing products into the U S and then, the distributors in each state uh, sell to bars and restaurants, so we sell to them. Yeah. Got it. That's a lot well, of we, paper. It is a lot of paper. That's a lot of yeah. paper. But we uh, love the J paper. We love the JVS guys. Yeah. Uh, should we try Katabom? Yeah, yeah. How do we say this it? is exciting? Oh, actually, I, actually, I was going to get you guys. How do you pronounce this? Uh, I thought it was. I thought you told me once it was like Karambam. I think that's, that's pretty good. Karambam. You got you got the you got the Indian accent, so that's good. You got to have karambam. like the little. It'll have a little head shake, and she gotta go. Cut up. Cut up. There you go. Perfect. See, that works. <laughs> Cut up. Well, we could do that because you're here, and you said it's okay. What does it mean? Ah, good question. What does so, it mean? A good question. Cut up is a, a South Indian word that means mixture. So mixture. This is this is a mixture. Uh, you see on the label, it has you know little nice little pictures of different um, hey, symbols Rob. on there. Raj, can you indulge some nonsense for one second? Sure. I think you said it was karambam, kind of like, wait. Did you get the sound? No, you didn't get the sound. Oh, I ruined the joke. <laughs> didn't get the sound. I ruined the joke. Oh. Probably wasn't a good can joke to begin with. Can I try it again? You may try it sure. again. Let me try one more time. One more time. One more time. Bear with me, folks. My apologies. I'm a novice. All right, let's try this one more time. Ready? 
I believe that's how you explained it to me once. Very good. Well, I think maybe that's the way you remember it. I don't know. Wow, well, I had some drinks. <laughs> so you were probably so, pouring some for me. Mixture. So this this whiskey starts off like I said with the first the first whiskey, the single malt, and and uh, so it's you know aged in a combination of new American oak and ex bourbon. That's the two symbols on either side of this, and then the spirit spends time in three different barrels, um, brandy, rum, and sherry. Wow. So they actually they actually take the whiskey from barrel to barrel. So it's not whiskey that's aged in different barrels and then melded together. It's actually uh, spends time in the different barrels to create this lovely whiskey. What's the time in each barrel? It, it really varies depending on the releases. Um, it can be anywhere from three to six months in each barrel. Um, to provide those layers of flavor. So are they? And this is are they batched? So you can you would you could know the difference between batch from one yeah. year or another. Oh, so you can so tell. every oh, sure. every release of Amrut has on the back label the batch number and the bottling date. So the one I have here is batch twelve, which was bottled in June of twenty nineteen. Ah, interesting. Okay. And so even even fusion and single malt. So if you pick up your your bottle of uh, the peated or the fusion, the full bottle, it will have the batch number and the bottling date on it. Um, my fusion is batch number 84, October, 2019. Oh, mine's a, this, this bottle's batch 64, 2017. Ah, there you go. Back yeah. some company called Purple Valley Imports. Ah, that was our, that was, that was, that was our, our, our former, former alias. Yep. Former name. Yeah, so cut a bomb. Uh, this was sort of, you know, remember a few years ago, uh, Amrit released something called Spectrum. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. And Spectrum was uh, something that they had made these bespoke barrels out of uh, five different or four different wood staves uh, to put the whiskey in there to give it all the flavors from the different whiskeys. So before they released Spectrum, there was Katabam. And Katabam was sort of the inspiration to do Spectrum, saying, hey, you know, We've done this by putting the whiskey into all these different barrels, but what if we took the staves from the different barrels and created one barrel that we could age the whiskey in? What would happen? Wow, there's a lot going on here. There is a lot going on here. Yeah, absolutely. Crazy. And, and it, and it yeah. tastes hotter than the Fusion, but they're the same ABV, aren't they? They are. They're both the same. Yeah. Like They're both 50%. Yeah, I think because because you're getting, um, you know, taste it's it's a, it knows is a little hotter because you have the uh, the sherry and the brandy oh, and the rum influences, the so you have you different the alcohol that is co contributing to there. Yeah. yeah, it's really nice. It's it's very, the like smell very fruity, is... really dark, rich fruit. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hmm. So good in the mouth. I love the texture of it. Wow. There's all these layers of flavor in there. Oh. Um, the nose is a little hotter than the other two. The nose is a little hotter. Yeah, and again, I was Not saying that because of the different alcohol yeah. uh, influences on there. You know, but in the, on a palate, you're getting, uh, you know, uh, different fruit flavors. Um, Dark fruits, and, dark fruit, um, chocolate, uh, uh, there's treacle, some spice, Christmas, treacle, yeah, spices, yeah, treacle. treacle. Yep. Yeah, wow. different baking spices. Like, um, some like dark cherries, stone fruit. Yep. Kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And it, and it this, fills your mouth. It's really, it's it's not front or back or the middle. It's, it's right. just, it's really good. Yep. There's like a little yeah, bit of orange just, peel, maybe. If you just let it sit there, yeah, it does have that citrus, citrus. orange peel in there. But if you just let it sit in your mouth, you'll just see all the flavors developing and things opening up and coming out of there. Yeah. Wow. This is really amazingly complex. How old is this? Do you know? Um, this is a total, it's probably a total of about seven years. Okay. Um, given the different components that go into it, six to seven years. At, at you know, six, at, seven at, years, at, how, at much, how much angel share is there in India? Or at least where? Well, that, that's a good question. So in Bangalore, uh, so Bangalore is 3,000 feet above sea level. Sea level. It's in the okay. south central part of India. So the uh, the winter temperatures are around the 75 
degrees in the summer. It's about 120. Oh. Uh, humidity in the winter is about 45%. In the summer, it's about 75%. So they lose uh, 10 to 15% a year. So averaging 12%. Um, wow. But what happens is it's very similar to Kentucky because it's dry, hotter summers. Um, they lose more water than alcohol. So the actual alcohol strength actually goes up. So okay. Ashok, Ashok likes to say that um, it's the missing link between Scotland and Kentucky. So they're <laughs> making single malts, but it's it's maturing like it would mat mature in Kentucky. Hmm. That's really good. Yeah. So if you think of it, you know, in five years, 50% of your barrel's gone. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can't have old stuff. You can't. I mean, you know, we're going to taste next uh, the 10 year old greedy angel, which is probably the li the upper limit of what they can age at. I mean, they've done a 12 year old in the past, but uh, you know, that lost, uh, I think they lost almost 85%. Whoa. When that was produced. So wow. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll just see how that happens. I assume there's no temperature controlled warehouses. No, it's no. controlled by the environment in which the, it, it is in. So, yeah. Well, we natural. talked. I think we talked about this before. The that that Amrit single cast nation bottle. Yep, is the classic uh, example of loss from from Angel Sierra. Yeah, they lost like a hundred oh, bottles or so, right? Almost half. Yeah, yeah, correct? absolutely. Yeah, in I one year's time, with, they ended up with. Yeah, that's right. Because when we first uh, gave them the sample, we we said the uh, contents were this much, and when they bottled it, it was a lot less. Yeah, did you add yeah. water? I just added a couple drops. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Incredible. The fruit. You really get more fruit with the water. It's really nice. Yeah, yeah, you would. Just yeah. a little bit of water, but really nice. Yeah. Is there like a, almost like a light smokiness to this? There, there is, is a little there bit. Is right? very, there's a little there bit of a little, little like peated tobacco. Brown. Yeah, but there's a little peated malt in it. So Okay. Because you get like a little peated. bit of smoke. It's, yeah, and about, it's about the same, 10%. It's the same peated malt from the infusion? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A very small amount. It just, you know, it's interesting. If you, uh, if you've ever been to a distillery and you take a, a, a barrel sample and you go, oh, there's something off about this, you know, it, it, maybe a little woody, a little off. If you take a little peated whiskey and add it to it, all of a sudden it rounds it out and gives you a flavor right? profile. So that's a, that's a really interesting little distiller's trick to, to be able to do that to just round out the uh, the flavor profile. Yeah, oh, interesting. Yeah. It's just solid. It's a really good whiskey. I like the yeah, sweetness. Yeah. I like the sweetness of it. The mm. sweetness, yeah. Again, you're getting that from the rum and the uh, the brandy. Uh, you know, and I forgot to mention earlier the the Indian barley has a naturally higher sugar content. So that sweetness that you get even in the uh, first whiskey we had, it's just naturally from the barley. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites is uh, Kalila, and I like young yeah. Kalila because it has oh, that yeah. that sweetness to it. And yep. there's there's that kind of thing in this t to me. Yeah. Right. And and more so with the water, added yeah. water. Yeah. 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 Oh, Raj, this is this is an annual release. Um, no, it's not annual. Um, this is one of their special releases, Mike, and it. Right. This one. They do this every uh, every two or three years. Two or three years. Okay. Yeah. So this is this one came out last year, and uh, we still have some of it left. Uh, but we got it. There was a big release. I think we got about three hundred cases of it, so we still have some left. When you were mentioning it was batch number twelve, I didn't know if that was like the twelfth year they've done it or just the twelfth time they've done it. So it's really twelfth, the twelfth time. 12th so time. It, okay. and 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 not you know, some of it would have gone. Um, you know, to maybe one specific country or limited releases. This this twelve was the largest batch that they did. So, right. you know, it was a, a large amount of it. Really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's uh, it's one of those whiskeys you just want to keep nosing. Yeah. There's so much going on. I yeah, kind of want to keep it's, drinking it's, it, but you know, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's well, really. I'm always intrigued by like the the aromas you get from a whiskey because I'm no, always, or even yeah. a glass of wine, whatever I'm trying to think. Okay. So if I taste this, is it going to taste like what I'm smelling? Yeah. I've always uh, liked like all these, these glasses at the end of the night, I'm going to take them inside and sit them on the counter 
and then mm. I'll smell in the morning. I won't wash them tonight. I'll wash them tomorrow because yep. I want to smell it the yep. next, next day. It's, yep. fat, it's really interesting how it changes no, overnight. No, 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 no. You're just lazy. I am lazy. <laughs> oh, well, I, I just, I'm a don't procrastinator. Don't take story. <laughs> Somebody did. I mean, if you leave them because you'll get because of the the sugars and the alcohol, you'll get crystals that form on the bottom of the glass when you leave yeah. it. And I can't remember who did this, but somebody actually took a a, a microscope and put right. glasses uh, put the yeah. glasses underneath it, and then took photographs of them and and showed those and showed that how the different yeah, it was like have different yeah uh, yeah yeah how While they you're have talking, different, I'm gonna find different images. But it was just fascinating that uh, that came up, and it uh, uh, you know just I, uh, it, I mean a lot of it is the uh, the sugar crystals, the alcohol crystals that are non chill filter together. all this stuff, right? I yeah. assume. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yep. that'll help in in getting some residue at the, at the end there. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So mm. yeah, I just I uh, I just love wanted it. to I wanted to share this one with you because I thought it was a really it's, it's a really beautiful. Beautiful whiskey, and, and it's funny because at the when the glass is empty, I'm getting a lot more like tobacco mm. notes. Oh, yeah. more, the, more that more the peated whiskey comes through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Because the peated just sits, sits there, but it's yeah. it's more like a, a sweet cigar, yeah. Yeah. cigar box, um, yeah. tobacco notes that are in there. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, if you're a wine drinker, it's it's something you get like a lot of cabernets have that kind of essence in there. That that mm. cigar box that. Yeah. That um, you know, when you get that liner, you know if you get that that's um, uh, cedar strip that sometimes it'll put into a cigar tube, right, to keep that moisture. You get sort of, and you, you smell that, you get that yep. hint yeah. of tobacco yep. that comes in with the cedar yep. and blends together. And it's just uh, a really fascinating uh, aroma. This will, this will be fun tomorrow morning. I think it's going to be yeah. really great. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I don't know if Yanni's still on, but I'm sure that. Uh, He's probably got a cigar. If he's having he's this, a, he's got a cigar going with it. So, Mr. Cigar, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Cigar, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, we didn't great, get to do our artichoke great pizza with run. Aaron? Sorry, yeah. we didn't get to do our artichoke pizza run with Yoni this year. No, we didn't. Uh. One time, one time was probably fine. <laughs> well, you know, the, the girl who had a bit of a, a drinking problem, yeah, and was vomiting outside the place, that kind of oh, eh, that wasn't good. That was in the West Village, right? Yeah, Before or after it, the, it the village. Oh, uh, we were waiting for uh, a pizza. We were we were waiting for pizza. She was next door at some bar. Yeah. So that was interesting. <laughs> that was interesting. This was after yeah. Kiddish Fest last year. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I missed that because I was in I was in Europe or something. I can't remember. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, I was in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> work. Work. I work, I was work. Ange, work. I work. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was working. Oh, we're stuck work. here. Always working. I was let working. Him have his, let him have his trip. This yeah. was really good. I beautiful yeah. asking. Can I ask you what the retail is on it? Approximately? Uh one uh I'm trying to think. One twenty five, one thirty. Oh that oh, I yeah. thought it was gonna be more. Oh, that's that's reasonable. Reasonable. oh, I can charge you more. I'm happy to charge you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't it's say on more. camera. <laughs> One twenty. I didn't wow. say it was cheap. I said it was reasonable. I don't know yeah. that I've seen this in any stores. Is it like it? I haven't yeah. either. High Times and KNL places like should that? should be. No, okay. uh, oh, High Times should have it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm, that's the. Yeah, it should be there. That's very good. Yeah. Wow. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. It's an, under, it's an under the house whiskey. I might put this under. Oh, the house. that's an under the house whiskey. Oh, yeah. I'll put nice. this under the house. Save this nice. bottle for later. Nice. nice. Yeah. You are you yeah, thinking that so. if you put enough whiskey under the house, there won't be enough room for you? <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> okay. uh, oh I had gosh. to have a plumber come out to the house, and he had to go into the crawl space. And he, when I opened up the crawl space yesterday, he went, oh, this is where the good stuff is. <laughs> ah. Did you pay him in whiskey? He took his own. No. U.S. dollars is worth less to me than you, than whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Have, have they ever experimented, Raj, with, with um, uh, aging not in India? Um. So the the two continents, Aaron and I were oh, before, right. 
Um, I'm not sure if you've ever had that, but uh, I'm just trying to see if I... I you know, I think I, I actually had that. I, I don't want to be a name dropper. Go ahead. I might have had, had that Go with Sus SSB with Susanna. I think she... Oh, had yeah. A bottle of it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't remember if I have a bottle of it, but, but the last release of that was a couple of years ago. And that... Uh, so it was aged in India first, and then it was... Um, taken to a secret European location uh, for further aging, a maritime location. For a long time or short time? Uh, th probably three years oh. more. So there's definitely yeah. a lot less uh, loss. Yeah, it slows it down a lot, correct. Uh, so, you know, about four, year, three, four years in India and about another three years in Europe, three to four years. So they have, they do have a... Uh, a current release that's aging in Europe and uh, they can't do it. in they, I think the first one they did was in Scotland, but they're not allowed to do that anymore because you can't, uh, you're not allowed to age whiskey from another country in Scotland, the new rules huh. that came into place a few years. I think that's huh. the case. Uh, um, I can't remember, but yeah, they, they, you know, the SWA said, no, you, you can't age imported whiskey here and, bottle it here so i have anyways. room in my crawl space and the here <laughs> in my house will be a Plenty lot less space in India, so there you go there you feel go free to send but do you have a do you have a bottling <laughs> facility at your place Thank you. i'll i'll yeah. put one in <laughs> there you go <laughs> we're gonna put yeah. it in the tunnels in the underground yeah. tunnels but if you if you find there might still be some two continents around and if you uh if you ever come across that uh it's 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 worth seeking out because it's totally a different experience very cool all yeah. right. Should we go to the big boy? The big boy. The big boy. All right. So this is the uh, that Armored, bottle is uh, amazing. Greedy Angels Chairman's Reserve. Um, so the, the Greedy Angels is um, their reference to the point of the fact that uh, the angels consume so much. Right. I said they're. Their angel share is, uh, you know, 10 to 15% a year, having 12%. So um, the first time they released a Greedy Angel, it was a 12-year-old. And they started with um, two 250-liter casts, so 500 liters in total. Mm -hmm. After 12 years, guess how much they had left? Not much. 93 liters. Oh, my gosh. So 500 liters, they had 93 oh liters left. Um, we got, I think we got 10 bottles for the U.S. of that release. Uh, you know, so two barrels, that was it. And they really had to, you know, you know, everyone knows you, once you take whiskey out of a barrel, it's no longer aging, right? You can't put a, right. a number on it. It's, it, it, it's not like in, um, with other spirits that you can put them into a, a glass of demi or, uh, or something else to, to allow it to sit in there, right? Um, and, and it allows to mature or mellow out or whatever, but this, it always has to be in wood. And that's why even some of the older whiskeys from Scotland, they'll put them into smaller barrels or barrels that have been, you know, used four or five times. So you get very little extraction that's going on and they're very little loss. But, uh, but this, um, so this last year, they did three Greedy Angel releases, three 10 years old. Uh, the first one they did was a peated whiskey that was finished in sherry cask. This one is 100% uh, unpeated Indian barley aged in ex bourbon casks for the entire time. And then the third one they did, which uh, we're not having right now, is the peated whiskey aged in uh, finished in rum cask. Oh, cool. So this is uh, this is wow. all um, unpeated. Uh, there was 900 bottles of this. Um, this is bottle number 707 that I have in my hands. I like and, the uh, symmetry, the 707. I'm gonna, I'm gonna so it's 55% it's now. What did it start at? It's 55. It, well, it would have started at 60, uh, 62.5. So it's and, lost seven. Uh, and yeah, it lost a little bit, and they they uh, just uh, they may have they may have proofed it down a little bit just to round it up. Right. But um, 
Wow. It has two fives in it, boys. We like the fives. Five. Wow. Five. Now, what uh, a Rush, have you had beautiful. All have you had all three expressions? Yes. Peated, the peated rum in this one. Yeah. Yes. Wh which yeah. one is this, Rush? This is the this number two. Is the, this is the second release. This is the uh is the same bourbon bourbon cask. Is that the same thing I'm showing on the screen? Uh yeah, I, no, no. That actually on the screen, that is the ten year old that they did uh, a number of years ago that actually had the mini on there, the little bottle was actually the cast strength. So that was actually 70, 74% alcohol, 73 points. Oh, good God. The mini. And they had to get special permission to, to do oh that. Oh, my God. Um, but that was their, I think that was three or four years ago that that was released. That'll cure one. Uh, Did you try the 70 the percenter? Yeah, it was, it was pretty odd. That was, there was only, this is the one we only got. I think 10 or 12 bottles of the one that's on the screen. Hmm. And there was wow. uh I remember Jack Rose took a bottle of it and, and Harvey made sure that he got the mini to uh <laughs> you No, know, I get a lot of citrus, like a lot of like orange. Yeah. There's like a lot yeah, of citrus is the... very common in the um, and I think uh American oak also contributes a lot of citrus notes. A lot of citrus and vanilla. This is this is like an old fashioned. But, but still a lot of vanilla. It's yeah, vanilla. isn't it? Yeah, a lot of vanilla. I mean, but spice. if you if you compare this to the first whiskey we had, I mean, it's it's you know it's like the the baby sister of it, it their baby brother of it, whatever. It's it has the same elements. I mean, this is just higher proof and obviously a lot more age. The color on it, it's just incredible. I mean, yep. it's just like that, you know, orangey notes on there, right? You get you get almost like a creamsicle kind of quality to the nose. It's mm. got that. It's got point. that interesting sweetness again to me. Yeah. I think the uh, I think wow, uh, Amrit, you know the the uh, Indian barley in the bourbon casks just um, really contribute a lot. Just just beautiful elements of flavor. A little bit yeah. of water, and if you put water in a bit, I'm gonna try that. Did they rechar all the barrels? No, uh, they no, they don't. The, the, when they get the new barrels in, they they use them as they are. They're, the barrels come knocked down and they reassemble them. Okay. Um, and then they, they will just char them for uh, after the uh, second or third use, they'll rechar it. And again, okay. but those are used, those are mostly used as, you know, finishing barrels or, or uh, just neutral barrels to leave some, something in. So it, mm -hmm. you're not going to get a little flavor extraction out of a a recharged barrel. Okay. So at the distillery, is there a distillery shop, I assume, where you can buy there? No, no. 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 In fact, you can't, uh, currently you cannot even uh, taste at the distillery. Um, it's Indian illegal law? to do that. I mean, uh, we actually, yeah, it's, it's. Um, they, they've applied for permission to do that at the new distillery. They do have space that they will build a, a visitor center in. Um, but you know, they're going through the, uh, government, uh, arguments and everything else to be able to do that. So would they be the first distillery to be, is that an I India or a, the, or Goan thing or is it? Uh, so they're not in Goa, they're in Bangalore. But, oh, I mean, Bangalore, uh, is it, it's yeah, a Bangalore. Yeah, it's, it's a Karnataka, the state regulations. Um, but I know that in Goa, Goa, everything goes in Goa and, and uh, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the uh, one, the other uh, Indian distilleries that are based in Goa, they have a visitor center just, you know, because the laws are different there. Uh, so every, you know, every state in India has different laws and regulations. And uh, there are even some states in India that are totally dry. Wow. And alcohol is banned. Yep. Right. That's what I thought. Because there's a, there's a good bit of it too, though. It's a, it's a yeah, probably portion. about a third of the states are, are, are that's a lot free, of people. And that's a pretty big country. Free. Yep. Doesn't mean they're not drinking, but, though. And, well, and you're, know, yeah, you're such a big, I, I such was, was going to say that. Oh. I was going to say that because there's, yeah, a lot of it's funny because there's there's a certain state in India where uh, a number of uh, retailers in the U.S. are from, and uh, you know they, uh, I always joke with them saying, uh, "You guys, you guys drink more than anybody else because you know, they just <laughs> they they just sneak it in and and uh, are consuming it at their households." But yeah, is you there can't buy it, you can't buy it legally? 
is there um, moonshiners, for lack of a better term? Uh, there is, but unfortunately, a lot of those um, produce really bad poisonous alcohol. There's yeah. been, you know, there's been a lot of things in the a lot of articles in the newspapers and uh, things about at uh, weddings, uh, people dying from alcohol poisoning. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, um, sort of nebulous behavior in in producing uh, alcohol. That you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't consume. You know, there's an old, there's an old saying that uh, there's more Johnny Walker Black sold in India than is produced in the whole world. Because there's <laughs> a lot of, a lot of counterfeit. You know, you get, you know, people yeah. will, they'll, they'll find the old Johnny Walker they'll Black bottles and fill them with whatever, mm -hmm. and and you buy them, and it's, uh, yeah, you never know. I see, I see, everybody's become greedy, greedy. Greedy Mike, Greedy Gila, Greedy Aaron, and I'm generous. Wow, you hooked us up, <laughs> there bro. Go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, this is a, a beautiful, you know. Well, uh, and I mean, we, we like to say that one year in Bangalore is like three years in Scotland. So, you know, this 10 year old is going to be like a 30 plus year old uh, Scottish malt. And, and adding water really brings out that sweetness mm. again, just like on the Kavanaugh. Very, and very. And for fifty five percent, you don't get it. it no, really comes across as a, it's so smooth. Yep. Mm -hmm. Temporarily. Yeah. Uh -oh. And she's going to Google Maps. Yeah, but you're not. You're you're too far north to be in Bangalore. Oh, am I? It's down south. Yeah. Oh, so what is this? The Guru Gram office. I don't know what that is. I don't know either. Okay. Well, let's find it. Let's find it. I believe it's go, down uh, on the southwest it's, coast, it's, correct? It, it, no, it's on the coast. It's central. It's south central. central. Oh, okay. uh, so it's it's inland. It's uh, uh, all right. Well, not on the like coast it, at all. That, so it has no. Yeah. So you just need to zoom up. There you go. Too far, but yeah, there you go, and zoom in a little bit more. Where'd I go? So I'm pointing, but you can't see my far finger. north. No, I can't. Where am I at? Is this Bengaluru? Is that uh, it? Bengaluru. That's, That's Bangalore. It. Yep. Bengaluru. Okay. There we go. That's it. Okay. Yep. So also so known as there. so Bangalore has like a bunch of nicknames, including the Silicon Valley of the uh, of of India, and also the uh, the Garden um, State or Garden City. I mean, a lot. Hey, you can see all the green. We're in the Garden State. There. Yep. It's the New Jersey of India? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> wow. But that, that you, also, sorry. You, guys, <laughs> you guys will like this. You'll have to, you know, this will, this will be reason to visit when we can visit is because it's also known as the, the 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 pub capital of India. There's more Excellent. bars and pubs in Bangalore than anywhere else. Excellent. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. So it's I'm all a, in. A great we cocktail to, culture. I mean, we have some to of go. the and, we have to go. And the brew pub, I mean, you guys are into beer. I mean, the, the number of yeah. breweries, the brew pubs in, in Bangalore is just incredible. We <gasps> went to a couple uh, when I was there in, in uh, February and just amazing beer that's being produced there. Really? That's oh, that's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. So, Have you guys, have Mike and, and Ange, have you guys reviewed any uh, Indian beers before? I would say no. 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 I don't know. But they're not. Can you get you Indian should. beers here in the States? Yeah, you can. Hmm. Well, Just got to find a little Indian market somewhere, probably. Uh, well, there is one, but they don't, yeah. sell, they don't sell liquor. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we have a, we have a but it's available. I mean, there's there was Kingfisher is oh, usually you know, I readily think available. That. I think I've seen um, Kingfisher. But yeah, the yeah, Kingfisher yeah. that's here is actually made in Canada. It's not Oh. It's not ah. made in India. It's there not, are, is it a Molson subsidiary? No. Uh, yeah, who makes it? I can't remember which distillery um, or which brewery, but there's um, Hayward's 5000 is an Indian beer that's actually made in India. Um, there's a bunch of other ones that, that make it here, but, you know. Yeah. Is, is there a big wine industry in India, too? There actually there there actually is. in um, There was um, in the south of India, there's a whole area, the Naga Valley, where a lot of wine is produced and a lot of uh, French and uh, Italian wineries have invested there to to help um, sort of 
help the wineries along in in, in uh, cultivating, doing proper cultivation and producing stuff. Um, I was there's a huge wine liquor store in Bangalore called Tonic, T O N I Q. I was there last year, and upstairs there's one wall that's all Indian wine. Wow. Um, and I, I brought a few back, and it's just uh, inc you know incredible stuff that they're they're making. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is very good. This it's is delicious. Really, really good. Is it? I mean, if someone so, told me, you know, it was like a Highland Scotch, yeah, or a Highland single malt, I mean, yep. you never know the difference. Nope. So this will this will run you about uh, eight hundred bucks a bottle. Whoa. Whoa Under the house greedy. whiskey. <laughs> they are greedy. What's that? <laughs> Under the house whiskey. Under the house. Good lord. You know, it's almost like like a Glen Morangy, like a signet. Mm. You know, like it has that level of like richness. I think I like the. Mm. the one I can't pronounce. <laughs> a little bit better, but they're both great. Yeah, they are good. They're all very good. I mean, the fusion is like a great, you know, <laughs> like it kind of a, a step up from the from the daily Amra Dram. Mm. Yeah. So I mean they're all they're all really really good, and, and the I'm, addition of the peat to that just changes it completely, where it's a whole different thing. It's it's really nice. I've made old fashions with with, Am uh, with the uh, fusion. Oh, Delicious. absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Any yeah. of these would be good in an old fashioned. Though I don't think I'd spend an eight hundred, you know, an eight hundred dollar no. whiskey and have a <laughs> no, old fashioned on that one. Yeah. That's a little bit out of my price range. <laughs> but thank you for sharing it. It is delicious. Yeah. It's. The bottle you know is amazing too. We're gonna make this one last. Yes. There you go. There you go. I will not be giving my share to the Wookie. No. <laughs> Did you yeah, it's funny. The the fusion uh, a number of years ago, we entered. Uh, uh, you know, Paul Packholt runs the uh, Ultimate Spirits Challenge in mm -hmm. New York, and and uh, back then they were doing uh, you know the Scotch category and also doing uh, Scotch cocktails. And I said to Paul, like, I want to enter a fusion, but I want it to be in the Scotch cocktail category. I don't want it to, to, to you know, to to be in its own like category. World, world whiskey or whatever they want. Yeah, to call but it. but also but also I said it, I wanted to compete in all of the Scotch cocktails because they were doing a, a Rob Roy, uh, a Rusty Nail, and a Blood and Sand. Right. So three traditional Scotch cocktails, and he said, "Okay, all right, I'll I'll do that for you." Uh, so. Um, Fusion took first place in the Rob Roy, uh, first place in the Rusty Nail, and second place in the Blood and Sand. Hmm. What's a Rusty Nail? And people, oh, that's Rusty Nail. Uh, rusty Nail is Drambuie oh, right. and whiskey, so a very half and half. Or? Very, yeah, uh, well, it depends the way you want it. Yeah, I usually yeah. do. I usually do a two thirds and a third, but you know, okay. I think there's, I think because. Trampy is very sweet and and cloy, so you right, know, right, right, right. It, but yeah. Well, but, that's yeah. you know, it's medicinal. Yeah, <laughs> it's medicinal purposes only, Trampy. <laughs> exactly. Throwing your tea. Exactly. Yeah, See, I, like I everything we drink. I always find Scotch really isn't great in cocktails for the most part. It's not. I don't. Yeah, I mean, yes and no. Not as versatile in terms of like 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 a rye or a bourbon. I prefer them mm. on their own. But you know, there are exceptions. Obviously, a little peat over my vanilla whiskey. Vanilla yeah. ice cream, <clears throat> yeah, that, work, that works nicely. I like yeah. Scotch cocktails. Well, I like highball. I mean, a, a, you know, oh, Scotch for highball, highball, yes, a highball, um, absolutely. I'd but, rather I mean, have a, a, you know, a, a Rob Roy was a precursor to the Manhattan, uh -huh. right? You know, it's 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 Rob Roy's made with Scotch, Manhattan's made with bourbon, so it's the identical cocktail, just a different uh, component going into it. Mm. Um, I, it's interesting that you said that cocktails are uh, there's a cocktail culture in India. I would I don't know why I would not think that. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. I can. Did Raj freeze? Did Mike freeze? Raj is frozen. Yep. I think they froze. I'm, frozen. I'm just staying very still. I'm just cold. Oh, you're cold. very still. I'm cold. You're like you're being your sloppy self. <laughs> I'm expending no energy. Let me see if I can bring him back. Let's see if I can. I'm gonna I'm gonna get the paddles ready. Ready. Zap, zap. Clear. Clear. He's back? No, he's not back. Uh oh. Maybe maybe Raj needs to go out and come back in. 
I didn't do it. Maybe he had her, he had us on a timer and he's just done know. with us. He's done. You know, he's so I think, done. I think he wanted to go to the green room. Oh, he's coming back in. He's going to come back in. So this is really fun, though. This is That's nice. Really good. I'm this just in my light here. Well, and the guided tour is, is what you want. You want somebody who really knows the whiskey. To tell you Absolutely. The whiskey. Absolutely. And 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 our man Raj, he knows his stuff. I'm not opposed to the hand holding to tell me no. how it's supposed to taste. Isn't it, and isn't it funny how, you know, pre COVID, distilleries have just become like little entertainment centers, right? You know, you do the tour, they lead you right to the uh, gift shop, you buy your shirts and you buy your 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 bottles. Not an Amrit. <laughs> you can't yeah. do that there. Yeah, can't, can't, nope, no can do. It's That's like so Disney, but weird. better. Well, here, you mean, what do you mean? You mean distilleries in general? Yeah. Yes, well, the Disney ride an ends with the end of the gift shop, but yeah. I'd rather get the whiskey. Oh, come yeah. back, Raj. Come back. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? I was going to, the question I had for him was, I just assumed if you could, like every distillery, there's always distillery only bottlings, right? Uh -huh. That you can only get in the, at the, right. in the gift shop. Well, they have no gift shop. What if uh, they do? What if they have tours? I don't know. And I wonder if there are things that are only made for just India that would never get out to here, or only for right. Bangalore. Oh, he's back. Get out of Bangalore. Yeah, he's back. Oh, let's ask that question. Because uh, uh, where do you go? Where do you go? Hey, all right. My uh, my. I don't know why the uh, internet went down for a minute. Oh, it went down. It just freeze up. You were no, no. It, it it just it went down. Uh, yeah. Oh, it happens. It must anyway, be, Aaron had must a question. Have spectrum. Uh, no, we we AT and T, but it's just uh, I don't know. Our it's, it's, uh, wonky. it's supposed to be a thousand thousand. You know, it's it's the highest Eight. they have thousand bits, but uh, well. So we were talking about uh, the reason I asked you about the whether there was uh, a store or a visitor center on yeah. on campus. There was I was wondering if you could, there were bottlings that you get. At the at the distillery that you couldn't get, you know, you, you, but that's you can't, question. You I mean, can't buy there. But Mike yeah. suggested maybe there are bottles. Maybe there's bottlings only for India that we can't, we would never see here in the states. There, there actually are. Uh, Mike, good job. No, if I have anything here, um, hmm, uh, I don't have anything right here. But there are there are things that. Uh, are, are bottled only in India. There's something called uh, amalgam, which oh. is uh, there's two versions, an uh, unpeated and a peated version, which is only available for India. It was developed for the Indian market to placate the consumers until such time as uh, they had enough uh, inventory to be able to sell uh, fusion and, and their single malt. And then there's one, uh, I think that's the only one that's only in India. Um, but I mean, obviously, as I said earlier, the the versions in India have lower alcohol than what you get. Or is uh, the full line? There's just there's an Indian version of the full lineup that are all lower ABV. Um, all they sell in India right now on the regular mm -hmm. lineup is the single malt and fusion. They don't ah. do any of the other ones. Um, yeah, you know, just just because they they there's so much demand and they just your worldwide demand and just can't satisfy it. So, you know, the plan is to be able to um, ramp up. And that's why the second distillery will allow that to happen. And the, the benefit of the fact that they the whiskey matures a lot quicker means, you know, probably in about three years, three to four years, they'll have enough supply to be able to meet domestic demand as well as worldwide demand. Have you ever had the, the, the new make? Yes. How is it? It's really good. In fact, uh, oh. with a, with a new distillery, you know, I will I will have some new uh, I will have some new make samples later this year that uh, we'll do out there. But with the new distillery, um, you know, uh, Ashok has made some changes in the fermentation uh, and also the cuts. So uh, last August, when I was there, um, taste I, I was tasting the new make right off the still the still cuts and. Uh, just very fruity, uh, you know, lots of richness in there. It's just uh, beautiful. It's coming off at, I think it was like 62.8, 62.9 that was coming off the stillette. 
Wow. But yeah. so that one was 71.4? 73.4. 73.4. Yeah. And that's just what how, so they're how do they get to that number? Because it's dry. I mean, it's like it's Kentucky it, where because the water is evaporating. Because it's drier, you you know you lose more water than alcohol, yeah. right? Because so uh, yeah, um, uh, you know it's just if it's if it's uh, if it's a moisture uh, more moisture driven uh, atmosphere like it is in in Scotland, you're going to lose more alcohol than water because alcohol is lighter. You not you know the it's so saturated in the atmosphere, it's not going to take the water up. I'm going back for some more fusion. It's so good. You got, yeah. Have you guys had the, I'm just going to grab the. He's going to gloat right now. What, he is going to gloat, but that's okay. No, no. no so for my, we, you know, we've been, we've been doing the. Uh, oh, that was uh, good. You, how you gave single it releases. So well, we the Atma. Thing. Yeah, we sampled yeah. that. That was really good. The that Atma good. is yeah. the uh, label for any single barrels that we do for the U.S. Mm -hmm. So. This this particular one was unpeated, aged in Oloroso sherry for. We had uh, it during the uh, blind tasting online. Six years, six oh, years. Right. Yeah, well, now, you had the. Um, you oh, didn't have this one. We had the peated we uh, had the port. Peated yeah, the peated port. Oh, is, right. oh, there's different this, versions uh, of the Atma. Yeah, Atma. Um, uh, Atma is. Oh, okay. A single barrel every time okay. we do one. So you had this one, which was the okay. heated. Uh, that was delicious. You know. That yeah. was delicious. That was really good. So we'll ha we have another one that we'll have uh, later this year coming out. Uh, I think we're going to do another unpeated version of it. But, uh, but the, I was uh, in um, Indianapolis a number of years ago. Is that in Indiana or India? Indianapolis. <laughs> oh, Indianapolis. Okay. And uh, this is a raw. This is a raw. It's further story. east or further west, depending yeah. on which way you're going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was there for work and uh, had all time, and I, I found a downtown liquor store, and um, they had this the very top shelf of this little uh, spirit section. They had this red box, mm. and um, I didn't know what it was. It was an amaret, and I had mm. them bring it down, and I texted Raj. Um, the intermediate are, cherry. It was the intermediate cherry, and and Raj said, "Get it," and I didn't know what I was getting, <laughs> and I bought it. And I have behind me in those cabinets. I have the box still. I don't have the whiskey anymore. It's the greatest box, Mike. You would love that box. Was that when the they, big box? That was the it's like a coffin. Was the first release they came out with was quite large. It was a, 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 a extra wide box, and then they went to a smaller one, but. Uh, it opens. Can't like remember a which one it was. Casket. Uh, it looks like it looks like a casket on the inside. It's kind yeah, of it had like cloth. like a silver yeah. a clo a silver cloth in there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That was a okay. really interesting whiskey because that yeah. was shiny packaging. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It went yeah. it went from what sherry? A sherry. It went cask? from it went from bourbon bourbon to sherry, sherry to bourbon. bourbon. And was it like yeah. a mistake or something? Originally? No, 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 no. They it intended was, to planned. do that because. They uh they tried leaving it in sherry the entire time and it just the sherry sort of overtook the armory um, flavors. So they wanted to retain the armory um, flavors. So by putting it back into bourbon, it helped to mellow some of the sherry flavors. Um and then that was bottled at fifty seven point one as well. Um, oh right. Which, yeah. So that was that Do was they do all their own package design there? Yep. yep. Wow. It's very creative. Yeah, I'm gonna dig yeah. that. Cat. I'm gonna dig that out. Be right back. They went through a bunch of different. They've gone through a, a, a variety of different packaging uh, ideas and stuff like that. So, hey, uh, Raj. Yeah, that would be uh, scotch under a microscope. There you go. That's cool. Like, but what scotch? Do you know? Oh, I don't know. This was on the Smithsonian website. It's almost like Starry Night. Yeah, it's kind of cool, right? That is very cool. I mean, but there is, Angela, there is somebody who did um, a variety of, of different scotches or different whiskeys. Really? Uh, under a microscope. Hmm. They, you know, they let the, the glasses um, uh, dry up, you know, with the and the, the crystals okay. that are formed in the bottom of them. They put them under a huh. microscope to, to do that. But that was that was pretty cool. I'll, I'll keep looking while you're, while you're chatting. I could almost multitask. Almost. Mm. Yeah. 
So, Mike, are you actually you in Key West, West, or are you just wearing that shirt? I'm just wearing the shirt. I'm down in, uh, oh. I'm at the shore in New Jersey. Ah. The Garden State, like the Bangalore. And, 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 and you guys having – uh, is it still masks and stuff in Jersey? or? Yeah. 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 Hmm. yeah. It's it's not mandatory on the streets, but at, uh, any place you go into, you have to wear them. So. Yes, that ah. is the old packaging. Yeah, that's the original packaging that it came in. Um, and a lot of times people complain, the retailers complain because it was so big. Yeah, it was very um, large. How I got it home, I'm not sure. Yeah. Shelf. There's nowhere else to put it. Yeah, yeah. Very that's why it wasn't. Carefully. It wouldn't fit anywhere. And, and it, it was, was like a pro whole back then, thing. it was probably 115, 120 yeah, bucks a bottle. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, wow. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So this is. Oh, this there you is, go. That's the Macallan. Okay. That's the Macallan, apparently. The Macallan 150. I don't know what that means. Um, okay. Then we've got uh, Glenn Livett. Wow. That's, that's cool. Livett. That's weird, right? That is Brooklotti. Really? But, you know, they've got like, what, 75 different expressions? So yeah. <laughs> which, which Brooklotti? Yeah. Uh, that's what a Glenn Boyne <laughs> looks like. Those look an agate stone. Wow, that's, that's cool. That's, that's neat, right? Yeah, that's weird. It's like a, it's, it's just bizarre. Now uh, they used I, all, I can't remember if they used all same glasses for it, but uh, uh, yeah, um, I would think, right? You know, the, or, or if they took it and put it on a slide and let it. Okay, let I think they on the slide. I thought they were on the glass. That's what oh, I thought. Under but, maybe not. But it's they put like, it under a microscope. But I wonder if they actually. I mean. Put the drop, you know, put it onto a slide to let it dry, let it dry and then took it out there. But okay. uh, uh, I, I remember that experiment uh, that somebody did, and and they turned it into artwork. But it was really fascinating to see all those differences. Aaron, I think you have a new project. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't have a microscope. <laughs> you you need a get microscope. one. Get one. You get one. You don't need anything fancy. Amazon. Yeah, exactly. We'll get you one. So, what, are there lots of crazy rules in uh, India for, um, like we have here, like bars are only open certain times, or you can't buy alcohol on certain days, or is it kind of like it's free very, It really, it really varies from state to state. Ah, you know, I mean, like there, here, there's, like here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what? There in the U.S., it's even varies from county to county, right? You get yep. within states, different counties have different county, regulations. Well, you've but, been here. I mean, you know, where Mark is, yep, one town dry. over, it's dry. Yep. I know. Then you go, and then you're in Westmont, and then it's then it's back to normal. You know what? Then I, you go I to college in, when it's dry. Yep. I grew up in Toronto in a, a, an area that I used to live in. Um, one side of the street was dry, and the other side was wet. Oh, my gosh. Which, which side were you on? <laughs> the good side. <laughs> what do you guess? <laughs> <laughs> the wet side. <laughs> there, yeah. Really? Literally yeah. across the street? Seriously. Seriously, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it was a little suck, a little section, and they, I mean, they finally did away with it. But there was a, a guy who was, uh, you know, a, a Templar, a total uh, teetotaler, and and uh, uh, not a Templar, not Knights of the Templar, but a temp, uh, teetotaler, temperance. Temperance. no, temp, temperance. Temperance. Temperance, guy. temperance, 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 not yep. Templar. And uh, you know, he for a year, every time, every since he was alive, he would always. Every year on the ballots, it would be you know we're going to keep this area dry, and you know all the all the restaurants on that side of the street would say, you know we're 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 being killed because it, you know across the street all the restaurants have booze, but hmm. they just have to excel with their food because you know. Poor, yeah. uh, I saw this today that uh, there's something about the city of New York was going to stop allowing. Uh, Purchasing of alcohol directly from bars. Yes, right. And Susanna, well, the cocktails to go. Cocktails, the cocktails to go. To go right? Cuomo already, uh, uh, for some reason, said we're not going to allow this anymore. Which you know, it just is stupid. It's just crazy because it's one of the ways that the bar, some of the bars have been surviving or yes. releasing some revenue stream by doing that. But I don't know what his rationale is behind doing that. Well, there are a couple of good articles recently about whether or not a lot of this, all these. Temporary rules? Are they going to stick after all this? And hopefully they do. Well, where was it? <clears throat> yeah, what, uh, I can't remember which state uh, made it permanent. I don't know if it was. Uh, oh, I just saw that too. Iowa. Yeah. 
Iowa, I think yeah. Iowa said that it's 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 permanent for cocktails to go. So uh, that's only five people in Iowa, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah. Not hey, it's the first primary in the uh, country, right? Or close yeah. to the first primary. Yeah. It's a leader. It's you, a, you need one state to be first, and then you all start to fall. There you go. That's right. When <laughs> Iowa goes, it all goes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. But yeah, so. the bars here, same thing. If if they mm. didn't have cocktails to go, they would all be out of business. Yeah. You know, Raj, you know um uh Scopa out here? Yeah. Uh oh lightning. Yeah. That's a little uh, place in Venice. Place in Venice yeah. where there yeah. is the most black adders I've ever seen in my life yeah. at any bar at, at, yeah. at this at this uh speakeasy. When this thing all first started, Pablo, the owner, he was selling his he was selling bottles. Yeah. Just like Jack Rose, right? Just to Bring in cash. Well, he just brought. Um, he had bought us uh, half a cask of black adder, uh, black snake. Oh my gosh! And then he wanted more, so we did another release for him. Which uh, I don't think he. I think he didn't. He got in April or March of this year. So another um, one hundred and fifty bottles or something. One hundred and thirty wow. bottles. Um, you know, and, and uh, so he must have that still, you know, that he's selling off. But yeah. Yeah. Well, the bars, the restaurants just closed again here a couple days ago. Yeah. So he's, I think things were looking up and now things are not. So he was I initially trying to get rid of everything and then probably thought, hey, why am I getting rid of everything? I get, we're going to open again. And now we don't know what's going to happen. Well, it's interesting. I mean, Jack Rose. So, you know, they sold a lot. Bill, right? Bill sold most of their inventory and, and then they've been buying stuff just to sell it, because uh, you know DC anything goes. And and uh, and Bill said that when they when it, you know they've reopened upstairs, like on the, the patio level, the roof level. But uh, uh, they don't know when to open the main bar because when they open, they're they're certainly not going to have the amount of whiskey that they've had in the past. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too. When once things open up again, there's going to be social distancing and limit another amount of people so you don't need the same amount of inventory they'll right the same amount it'll last forever yeah so yep. yeah and I, I you know i really <clears throat> wonder if um once everything's lifted if people will go back to going to bars and and because you know everyone's oh like god i hope so realizing that hey i can enjoy it at home I you know i can have friends over you know we can entertain here we can do whatever and you know what are we going to a, a bar for uh, other than to, you know, to, 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 be, to get other products or the things, right? Well, it's a, it could be, well, it could be a sea change socially. Yep. Um, yep. And which means maybe that we do, won't have as many bars. People still want to go to bars and restaurants, right. but there just won't be the need for as many if people are going to be staying home. Right. I, I think you're right. I mean, I, I, I think that, um, it's been, you know, you look at the number of restaurants in New York or LA or, or any of the big cities and, you know, on one street, there's so many places and, you know, they're all competing for the same clientele. And, and, yep. uh, you know, how do you, you know, do you need to have that many, uh, you know, and obviously, but that that's going to translate into the fact that restaurants can, are going to charge more, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, they don't have to be competitive, uh, as they are now. And, and, um, you know, they're getting, but they're, they need to offer something different, something unique. Yeah. And, and the restaurants in the business districts are going to take a beating because people aren't going to go back to work. They're going to work from home. Or, right. Or only work two that, days a week or three days a week. And, yeah. and that'll change you, that whole thing. You know, Mike, that's a, that's a huge, a very valid point. I mean, I think a lot of businesses are realizing that, you know, do we need to have all of these office spaces? Do we need to have all of those when we're just, people are just as productive from home and, and doing stuff and you know they you know they tried to getting a number of years ago and that there's some failures from that uh because it was implemented properly um but i think now companies are realizing that hey there's ways to do it and they're you know that okay we need to you know have a uh, every second day or every third day uh group meeting or you know action but uh, people can just be as productive working from home and in fact in some cases, people are being more productive because you know you're you're at home and you're you're connected the whole time, right? Yep. 
Sadly, yes. Yeah. No, I mean, but, uh, but the but downside I, is there's I, no I having teams, teams and Zoom and, and the WebExes and all that. It kind of filled the void that you had before, right. where you didn't have that connection, and now you do. That restaurant, right. Mike and uh, Angie, we went to. You guys took me to in Philly, um, some cor on a corner downtown, and uh, we had lunch before we went to that inside of that mall. The, the yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That place is a classic. Probably a place at lunchtime during the week is full of people work who work in the area. Right. right. The Red Owl Tavern. And they're the, probably uh, right. They're probably not even gonna. There's no need for that kind of place during the week. It, right. it, it'll be for tourists right. who go down to see the the, the what the thing across the street, the whatever that mall. Liberty one Bell, across Liberty Liberty Bell and Constitution Center. And all yeah, that. yeah, Liberty Bell. So you know, hmm. those places are gonna kind of struggle, I think, because there won't be yeah. the the downtown um, business person, right? Yeah, but there is some occupying offices. About, um, there's something to be said about separation of uh, home life and office. Oh, of course. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like you really want to bring that stress of having like a home meeting in your house. It's like, I don't need this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what are you going to do? You know, at least we're still working. At least we're, we're, we're one of the few, the fortunate. So Raj, I, you shouldn't, don't, I shouldn't complain. Raj, do you have an office? Do you go to or you're a home office only? Home office. Home office. Yeah. I've always, uh, well... Yeah, everything. Every ever since I started the company, we've always had a home office, and you know, we're just a, a virtual company. So, yeah, uh, yeah. It, I think uh, it's a it's a big change for, and it just trickles down to all these other industries who don't really they they feed upon those big office buildings or the business district wherever right. they are. There's no possibly less need for them after if they yeah. think if things don't happen nearby. I think real estate, you know, in general is going to see a huge shift. You know, look at the empty the buildings. Malls. I mean, who need, you know, the anchor stores that uh, uh, really <clears throat> provided all the funding for these malls are, are, are going to yep. disappear. I mean, you know, a number of pennies and Macy's have already declared bankruptcy. Uh, Neiman Marcus is, uh, you know, they're, they're not going to be there. They're realizing, you know, they can, they can put on, uh, it, like Nordstrom's and stuff has been doing, okay, 20% off uh, cosmetics, which they've never done before. Right. And they're realizing we don't have to pay commission to our salespeople. You know, we don't have to pay our overhead. We can do this. Yeah. And why do they need to have floor space to do it? Why do they need to uh, have, uh, play, uh, you know, warehouses where they have to keep all the stuff in the supply chain in, in places when you just have f fulfillment centers? You know, so bring bring this back to uh, this stuff. So this three tier system in this country, yep. at least. Yep. Is there does this help move it along to mitigate that? Change it long term. Well, I uh, long term, yes. I mean, short term, there's still so much pressure from the lobby groups. The uh, Mind and Spirits, Wholesalers of America in general, and other groups just, uh, you know, are adamant that three-tier system works. I mean, a lot of that is to protect the uh, the independent uh, wholesalers, distributor and the, the independent wholesalers and the yeah. retailers. But um, I think that, you know, if you look at the some of the states where – there's a hybrid between government control and independently owned stores. If you look at Michigan, for example, or Virginia, where I guess Michigan is probably the prime example where government controls the uh, the price setting of things, and the re you know the retail stores are independently owned. Uh, mind you, the retailers don't make that much money on it, so it's not the ideal situation. But um, there, it's interesting during this whole situation. A lot of um, e-commerce businesses have started exploring different ways to online, and they're challenging the norm because uh, wine is available online. You know, there's right. a lot of direct consumer wine sales. You know that that bypass the three-tier system 
So why not spirits? You know, spirits has always had this ugly uh, aroma around it saying spirits are bad. Wine and beer is fine, you know, which makes no sense to me. I mean, spirits, yes, it's higher it's alcohol, sense. but, you know, you're still, you know, there's still moderation. It just it doesn't mean that if you have a and you have a bottle of beer, you're going to, you know, drink the entire contents, right? Of course. Um, but so we're actually we're we're actually playing in that field. We're looking, we're partnering with a couple of e-commerce uh, back room sites that will allow us to um, sell directly off our website. Oh, you know, so consumer, you know, and it's you know, it's not to supplant um, the system and maybe else, but it's to offer consumers in states where you know, we can't get into, or it doesn't make sense. I mean, you know, I'm not going to invest in North Dakota or uh, Wyoming or, uh, you know, th for me to get stuff to, to Alaska or whatever else costs so much. So if I can find a way that we can still reach the end consumer um, and, 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 you know, and still do it legally, uh, let's find that, let's find that out, find a way to do it. Do other countries think we're nuts? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Next because question. For more, for more see, than one reason. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> Next question. When I see that you can buy direct booze on Amazon in other countries, yep. Yep. It, it, my jaw drop. They must yep. think we're crazy that we have to go through this thing. Well, you know, it's funny. Our, our, uh, our, our friend that uh, you alluded to earlier, um, he is adamant that one of the releases – only be available online to consumers. Mm. And I said, you realize that, you know, there is not uh, a system that allows that. <laughs> you can't do that you here. Know, uh, I mean, there is no Amazon that sells booze. There is no sort of e-commerce site platform that does that. Um, and he says, well, but I, you know, I want to be, make sure that there's something that's consumer direct. So we're, you know, we're looking at options to be able to do that. Um, yeah, so there's this this one release is only going to be available consumer direct. So. Well, I hope that this is a this whole one of the things that comes out of this uh, for a retail or for the consumer is that the three tier system gets chipped away a little bit, a little bit. No, you can buy well, cocktails. Now you're buying cocktails from a a, mar, a, uh, a bar. Um, yep. There's only like two bars here in, in LA that still you can actually buy a bottle from. Those license those those uh, permits are a hundred years old, but no one else gets yep. them. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that that must exist in other cities. It, it sure would be nice that we didn't have all this crazy prohibition era gobbledygook. <laughs> That really hurts the consumer, I think. Well, you know that I agree with you, but unfortunately, it's uh, um, when prohibition, or sorry, when the repeal of prohibition went into place, uh, the Thirteenth Amendment, it um, left it to the states to decide yeah. the regulations and yeah, and, and you see how well the states, states made decisions. Well, no, I, <laughs> well, yeah, I agree, Ange, but it, in some states they. Some states actually went further and said, hmm. we'll allow the counties to decide. Right. Right. And, and 13, 12 or 13 states said, no, we're going to control it. We're going to, you know, we're going to implement our own uh, distribution system and our own alcohol, control the alcohol. You know, like I live in North Carolina where you can go into a, a wine store, a grocery store, uh, a, a drug store and buy, buy wine or beer uh, but you can't buy alcohol. Hmm. You know, alcohol is controlled by through the state system, right? And they work on a seventy-eight percent markup on things, so or eighty percent. So you know, we're supplying them directly, but you go through the pricing system, and I'm saying this is crazy. I mean, the amount of money you guys are making on this, you know, for doing nothing. Right, because our stuff is special order in North Carolina, but mm -hmm. they, you know, that's just the way they operate. It's not Pennsylvania, the same deal, right? Aren't you Pennsylvania is the same deal. It really, it really 
varies on uh, how you do it. So for a lot of our stuff, and and uh, I agree with Lee. <laughs> we stuff, all do. Uh, yeah, set free. A lot of uh, cheers, a lot of things, cheers, cheers, Lee. Cheers, Lee. A lot of things we sell in uh, in Pennsylvania are are special order, right. and uh, and actually it's funny because if it's because of a special order, it's priced differently, so it's actually cheaper for the consumer than if it was listed and carried in the state stores. Oh, really? hmm. yeah. Is there a lot of Amrit uh, around the world in duty free? Um, <laughs> there, um, yes and no. And, and, and don't get me started on the duty free. I thought of that because of Lee Zero calling in. <laughs> yeah. Cause duty free in most cases, uh, duty free is, um, is a misnomer. I mean, a lot of those are, are, are big, uh, multinational corporations running that. And, and if you want your product to, be in their stores, you, you got to be willing to pay to play. Ah, so, interesting. You know, when Amrit wanted to get into uh, Delhi duty free, it was like, okay, you'll give us product for free, plus you'll pay us this much <laughs> and we'll sell it for this much. Wow. Oh, that's like the and booze mafia. Like, the booze yeah. mafia. Like, Payola. Hey, no. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Play my but, record. Uh, <laughs> You know, and, and, you know, so, yeah, I mean, Dubai buys a lot of Amrit at duty free that they sell, you know, because there's a lot of Indians that go through Dubai that are going back to India and they'll buy up as much as they can. Um, but Bangalore duty free now has it. Uh, Delhi does. And they you know, relented. It was, it was funny. Air India went, uh, uh, said, OK, we'll carry Amrit on our on our flights in business class. Uh, and they decided they'll stock one bottle for each flight, international flight. Well, uh, you know, the bottle was you know, within an hour of, of departure, <laughs> the bottle was gone. So they realized they need a lot more than just one bottle <laughs> on, on the planes. Uh, That's funny. Yeah. And they weren't selling any, but yeah, it was crazy. So do they yeah, do special bottlings for uh, duty free? Uh, yeah, they have actually. They've uh, in Dubai. They've done uh, the Porta Nova and the uh, Intermediate Sherry, Ooh, but uh, lower cool. lower strengths and uh, different packaging just for the uh, uh, duty free market. Hmm. Yeah. Duty free is an interesting uh, experience. That's you know you yeah, see some interesting it, stuff, and I always wonder how much of it's just marketing and and it's it's really a lot special. Of it, uh, yeah, a lot of it's marketing. It's not I legit. mean, a lot of it. Uh, yeah, a lot of it's you know, the, uh, one of the big duty free conglomerates saying, okay, well, you know, we want this or we want that, and yeah, you know, so it's it, it, put it in a shiny it, bottle. I'm going to buy it. What's that? Put it in a shiny bottle. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> yeah, you know it's it's it's. There's a lot of that though know, in duty free. There is a lot of there shininess is. going on, and, and people know? just go, "Oh, you know, I've never seen this before. I'm going to buy this or whatever." Yes. And you know, it's it's incredible. Like you know, oh, duty free. I got to buy something. You know, and uh, I think it is it, it is pretty dead. Like Lee said, it's dead now. And uh, yeah, I mean, I you know, I've gotten, around. you know, I mean, I have a. Uh, I've got a, a few bottles of 21 year old Hibiki that I bought at, at uh, Tokyo duty free, um, you know, and, and this was before all the hype and everything else went up uh, and I think I paid like, you know, 70, 80, 90, maybe hundred bucks for it at the most, you know, and you know, you're not, you know, you're not paying, you know, now it's, it's crazy. The prices. Yeah. It's funny how it, uh, I always get the sense that, it's designed for a certain traveler, yep. a certain segment, and they're really good at marketing that stuff. And they probably go through, I'm assuming, it's, it, they're, those duty-free stores don't go away. They're always there, so they must, uh, they, what's, what's they say? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, well, but there are, I mean, there's there's selections that are only available at duty-free, and, and, and they do it because, you know, they know, yeah, let's face it, the, the consumer that's going through those airports, most of them are business travelers and they have, you know, high disposable income and, and they're going to go through and go, okay, you know, I, uh, 
I don't have time to go to a liquor store at home and, and I, yeah. you know, I want some cool stuff and I'm just going to pick up, pick this up because this is cool. This is, you know, neat. And I, uh, and there are a lot of, th- I mean, there are things that I bought, I mean, but it, there's the stuff I bought that's been very, very exclusive, very unique. And, and, but I'm not going to pay the price. I'm, you know, I'm not going to buy a 40 year old Mortlock for, Eighteen hundred dollars just because it's a duty free has a nice shiny bottle. Mike would. Mike, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Lee might. <laughs> Lee would. Mike would. Well, you know, if it was a yeah. Kalila, he's in. Yeah, Mike. That, that's Lee. Yeah, yeah totally. If it was I remember. Like I shall lock the more. Thirty years ago, when I was back when I first went to the Caribbean, at like St. Thomas, and you, all the stores in St. Thomas, and there's all this amazing yeah. stuff, right? And oh my God, they've got this this rum that you I've never seen before in my life. And yeah. I remember bringing home bottles of, uh, right let's say Pussers. Let's just say Pussers because yeah. that's probably what it was. And then coming yeah. home and then seeing it at Trader Joe's. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> schlepping it through airports. And you yeah, know yeah, that, yeah, then there was yeah. like no like limitation on what you could bring on the right. plane. You right. could bring it yeah. in your bag. They didn't yeah. look, they didn't care. Yeah, they and, carried a four pack on there. Yeah. Oh, they didn't care. And then you get home and, I could have bought it at Trader Joe's. What was I thinking? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that the, the you know, world that, has changed. That still happens a lot. But I mean, I, I remember stuff like I, I remember getting. Uh, I was in Copenhagen Airport and uh, flying back to London when I was working there, and um, there was bottles of a 1966 port that was specially bottled for some railway uh, that some found and and i think i paid like 80 bucks a bottle for it or something back then i said like, yeah I'll, i mean i'll take as many bottles as i can get you know is it, it was just sometimes you get those flukes that that are there but yeah. most of the time you know it's not worth it i mean it's it's uh if you're if you're somebody who has you know no sense uh and and a lot of money to throw away then you know fine you know to buy it and you know it's just uh I know. I, I I guess I'm a little jaded because I know what things cost. You know, I know what what sure. I you know You're on the what inside. I pay as a as a importer, and I know if it, you know if I buy barrels of something, what it costs. And you know, when when I look at the price and say, you know, I can buy you know x amount for this. Why should I wish? Why should I pay this? Yeah. Uh, but I you know I'm an exception. I'm not uh, you know the average consumer, right? So. Yeah. But I wanted, I was going to ask you this earlier about um, Black Adder because there are yep. there is Black Adder Amrit bottlings, correct? Correct. Yep. So does Amrit? Uh, are there a lot of independent bottlings of Amrit in only, general? Uh, on, currently only Black Adder and the one that we did for Single Cast Nation. Really, um, just those two. That's companies. the only independent. Well, so, okay, so. So friends that's, the only, only. that's the only independence that Amrit's done. They've done wow special bottlings for uh, uh, La Maison de Whiskey. Uh, you know, obviously stuff. for our the, uh, our uh, Atma line. That's the single bottlings, but um, we've done we've done stuff for uh, retailers. Um, we're about to. We've got. Um, uh, three of our three of our distributors across the uh, in the U.S. will uh, will be getting asks because well two of them because they they went to India in February and selected it because they were our two top markets so Texas and New Jersey are both getting single barrels that they selected New Jersey yep wow New Jersey is a huge market for us huh because everything is legal in New Jersey. From and uh, <laughs> wow, well, not everything. And yeah. um, there's, there's, Hamilton. You know, there's going uh, on. a retailer in, in uh, Massachusetts who is a huge uh, Amrit supporter, and he's done a we did one single barrel for him, and we're doing two more for him. Yeah, and Lee's right, Black Adder is awesome. I would agree. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'd love every yeah. bottle I had. Yeah, yeah. well, you guys like the Puff Adder, right? That we tried. Oh, oh my fantastic. god, that was so good. That was the, yeah. the Venom, the Black Adder, the Black Adder Puff Adder. Yeah, that that Puff Venom adder. we have was quite so good. The Black was, Snake. 
The puff Adam was, was good. That was that was the one that I told Mike to open, but this is the one that we tried. Oh, that so we tried, is, is uh, that that's out or it's coming out? No, it's available. Yeah. So, that was another bottle from the sample we did that night. Yeah. Right. Yep. So we need to we need to talk to our uh, Robin. We need to talk to that Robin and get him on the uh, get him on the show. Mr. Tusek. Oh, he's got to get back to me. Yeah. I thought you were going. I thought you were going to set up something with him. We did. He didn't get back to me. He said he would get back to me like in mid July. So uh, I guess I should email him. him. You got to remind him. He's <laughs> yeah. busy guy. I'm sure. Yeah. Man yeah. of man of mystery. European yeah. man of mystery. Yes. Yeah. I I I remember what when Lee and I started uh, getting into this stuff and talking independent bottlings, and I remember going on the Blackadder website, and I thought it was totally a a, a spam website. <laughs> I, this is this cannot be a real website. This is not Lee. How can we be looking at this stuff? It's not even a real company. Uh, what is this? That's yeah. like what is this? There's no. Is this somebody's name? What, what is this all about? Now it's like yeah. a right. You know, they've legitimized themselves. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, they're they're still. I mean, they're only they're 25 years old this year, and yeah, uh, it's a family company, a rel small, relatively right? a family company, small, but. But do great stuff, and you know who knows where they'll go. And they're very, Robin's very um, uh, unique individual. Uh, you know, it, when you get him on, you'll you'll f find out his sense of humor is is very uh, very unique. Um, and uh, uh, you know, just it, 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 it. But they do a great job. I mean, he has a great connection and uh, has a great palate to select uh, barrels. Um, you know, and we've had some amazing releases from him. So um, I think that, oh, yeah, the Sherry Cast Lecheg is just ama yeah, amazing. And and Robin's somebody who, you know, I remember about four or five years ago, he had a Glen Gary that I wanted. And I said, oh, we'll, you know, we'll take half the barrel of it. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, we're going to bottle it, uh, you know, two months from now. And I'm waiting for it. And I said, well, Robin, where is it? And he says, oh, I didn't like how it was, so I recast it. <laughs> and you know that's the, that's the way he is. He's not yeah. going to release stuff if it's not right, okay. if it's not ready. Uh, you know, and that, that to me, that's that's a lot of integrity. That's not like you know. There's a lot of independent bottlers who who will just say, "Okay, I'm just going to bottle this and, and sell it." And so he's, uh, he's a lot like us. We won't release a blog post or a video unless we like it. That's right. <laughs> We're the Pombasans of blogs. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but your your content's free. His is That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, but uh, it's yeah, work, it's, it's, it's it's great. Work. There's uh, this is Blackadder's 25th uh, uh, anniversary this year, wow. and, and he's releasing a lot of stuff. I just uh, uh, what did I just pick up? Uh, a 31 year old canvas and a 32 year old Invergordon and uh, uh, smoking Isla. And I'm looking at a few other things that I'm going to get from him. It, they do, they, they must do all kinds of different things for different markets too, I assume. Well, type like Japan and Taiwan, very unique thing. I mean, uh, Taiwan, everything to, for Taiwan is, is cast strength and, uh, you know, super bottled, uh, Japan. I was I was fortunate to be in Japan with uh, Robin uh, two three years ago, and you know everywhere every bar we went to, into, he was like a god. You know, people <laughs> were like fawning over him, and and uh, you know they they went they took us outside. They were taking pictures. And, oh my know, gosh! Who are who are? Did they knew who I am? It doesn't matter who I was. It was just <laughs> I was there with Robin, so they had to. Have me in the picture, so it's quite funny. You're just part of the posse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know, if you know, if you've ever been to Tokyo, Lee's been to Tokyo. But if you've ever been to Tokyo, it's. I mean, you go into the bars that there's room. There's only six people can sit in there, right? Small, yeah. But they have, you know, they probably have 500 bottles of, of whiskey or other products on there, you know, in this bar, and you wonder how do they survive, and you know, they do. It's just. You know, people come in there and they're going to drop, uh, you know, 50,000 yen and, and walk out of there. And, you know, another people come in there, drop another 50,000 yen. 
that that's weird because here you go into someplace like uh, seven grand where there's yep. a few thousand bottles or whatever there is, but there's also a couple hundred people in the bar. Yep. <laughs> it makes more sense. But there when it's a thousand bottles and there's six people. Doesn't yep. make sense. How's that yep. possible? Yeah. That's so yep. weird. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I, mean, I don't know how much their overhead is or anything, but that's you know it's just the way it works. So, yeah, yeah. that's so. I wonder what a place like Japan, or Tokyo, where the, where there's just mm. the density of people is like right now. We went to a restaurant in Omakase. There was a, a spot for six people, and it was three hundred thousand yen a person. So What's that? Three hundred dollars. Yeah, three hundred bucks and uh, a ten course meal. Um, you know, and then plus a uh, plus a charge for the sake that we we had, and it was unlimited <clears throat> sake. And we just, you know, we were somebody who knew our her stuff and she's shipping. But the 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 food was incredible. The presentation, you know, just amazing. And then at the end of the night, I said to the chef, "Oh, you know, uh, I was trying to mention, can I take, you know, a picture?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah." And I tried to go like around the bar, like, and he was like, no, 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 you're not allowed back here. I'll take my picture, but you can't be with me. Like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Boundaries, probably. Raj. Boundaries. It's yeah. boundaries, and boundaries. he's probably a criminal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, I agree. There's um, a new, where did Lee uh, Zero learn to type? Yeah, I don't know. Smoking <laughs> Tyler, totally wrong, but... There's a new lead, just so you know, there's a new smoking Isla that I will have coming out uh, from Black Adder. I just signed off on it, and this it's a nine year old smoking Isla uh, blended malt. So it's uh, two Isla whiskeys blended together, both finished in sherry. Hmm. On that kind of stuff with Black Adder, do you get samples of everything to try first? Nope. You know, I, they give you a list. They give me a list, and I look down the list and say yes, yes, no, yes, no. So you're trusting yeah. Robin and his uh, his yeah. palate. Do you check it twice? I am. I am. Are you like Santa? I mean, do you check it twice? <laughs> I do. I check it. Sometimes I check it three times. And I've had. Hey, you, know, you got to do what you got to do. I, I've had stuff that uh, I, I've never been disappointed in anything that Robin has selected the bottle. You, you get what you get, and you don't get upset. That's right. right. Tell that is to our the, kids. On the rock cask line, do they is that a is that big for them, or is it just a is that really a J J Japan, Asia thing? No, no, that's that. Yes. I mean, that's their that's that's their main that's their main line. The, the rock the, cask. Uh, the rock cask is their their main stuff. So it's single casks, you know, with the uh, non chill filter, no color adder, with the uh, uh, very little filtration that goes on in there. Good stuff. This um, the two places I've seen it the most was on a retail level was uh, the place in the Bay Area, um, the whiskey shop. Yep, whiskey shop's got Boy, a fair bit. Oh my god, I never saw so much yeah. black adder in my life there yep. on a, on a yep. shelf on a store shelf. Yep. Um, and then like I said that. I, <laughs> I took my wife to uh, Old Lightning. Yep, at Scopa, and we were the only yeah. ones there. Yeah, you like, told me they, they wouldn't allow you take a they wouldn't like you take a picture of the. You can't bring menu, you can't right? bring a phone in. Right, they right, take right, your right. phone ahead of time. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we were just talking, and you know, kibitzing about alcohol and people we know, and and Pablo's part of it, and the bartender just it's Lisa, my wife and I, Lisa at the at the, at the bar, it's like at five o'clock, and he there's a. It's like almost like an old kitchen where the the shelves yeah. are you know hanging from the ceiling, and he's this bartender oh, gets a little step stool and goes up to the uh, cabinet and starts pulling down black adder after black adder after black adder. and before you know it, there was thirty of them on the table at least, mm -hmm. and they're not all on the on the list, and that yep. was the only time I've ever seen a spring bank black adder. Oh, and I was uh, fourteen or nineteen. I don't remember. I was. I was just. I, is this say that's Springbank? Is that really say Springbank? I've never seen an yep. independent bottle of Springbank. It was just yep. crazy. 
It was just endless. Yeah, I have, I think, uh, I know I have a couple here, but uh, they, uh, Spring Bank's no longer selling to independent bottlers. Yes. So those were some of the last releases they did. Wow. Yeah. And I actually think the 14 was better than the 19, but. I think it was the 14. I, I yeah, seem to 14 recall. was awesome. I, if I had a picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> the 14 was so. Well, yeah. we should we should leave the Black Adder discussion for when we yeah, get yeah. Robin on. Yeah, yeah, we should. Uh, and and uh, I think I'll be back for that. So, yeah, Angel, you should just uh, I will. I'll retire. remind Robin about that because he, he, he said to me he's very keen to, to come back on and do stuff. And uh, oh. So yeah, he doesn't do a lot of stuff, well, right? You know, he, he doesn't. Does, he he does. Uh, the the one I did with him was the first one he had done, um, and uh, he said, "Oh, it's great!" And yeah, let's do it again. Uh, yeah, so I think he he'd be very very kind, and I think given that's their twenty fifth anniversary, I think yeah. doing oh, it would okay. be really Absolutely good. Absolutely, then um, I will I will email him when we're done. And I got some but stuff just, here, guys, and I can send you some samples myself for my stuff. Yeah, and, no, and, and, Lee, it, and it, Lee would definitely will send a sample of his stuff. Lee's <laughs> the man. Well, you know, we'll 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 do some we'll do some great black adders. I mean, I've got I've got some stuff. There's some really rare, old, dirty stuff that, uh, you know, not dirty, dusty. Sorry, dirty dusty. was the wrong word. It's not like but, it's uh, not like old, dirty bastard. Barely. <laughs> That's a whole other thing, right? But, uh, but PD, uh, Ricky. yeah, we'll, we'll get back on to Amrit. Just finish on Amrit, and yeah, yeah, uh, just uh, you know. I want to thank you guys for the time and, and opportunity to do this. It was and, a pleasure. And, uh, it was really amazing. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, thanks, it's, thanks for the samples. It's nice yeah, to perfect. it's nice to do this with uh, with friends. Uh, so next time I'll try and look for some. But so should we should we wrap this up? <laughs> no, nah, yeah. it doesn't matter to me. I'm just joking. Well, I'm know, saying we could wrap uh, up the online portion and we can go offline and just chit chat. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, we can do that. But no, it's All just right. uh, well, um, I, I think it, it's great. Yeah. Sorry, Angela, let you wrap it up. This was Rod, really fun. Yes. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for the samples. It was a lot of fun. Uh thank you to the Emirate Distillery Manager for the very nice message. And uh, you know, look for your Emirate on your shelves. You'll make Raj happy and uh, you'll be happy. That's the you'll most important. Yeah, most definitely. And, and, and you will have you will have eternal life because you know <laughs> that's I hope important. <laughs> yeah. I'll take that's that. Thing. All, right, All right, we're gonna wrap this one up. Total so, consciousness when you die. Wait, wait, wait. Go. We gotta do one last cheers. Do you have a good nope. toast, Raj? Can you do like a Simon Brooking toast? <laughs> uh, <laughs> can anyone? Oh god. Uh, can anyone Canadian? do that? Uh, Namaste. <laughs> No, I'm trying to think. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, actually, I mean, you know what? You always... owe us about ten minutes of stand up. What? That was fine. <laughs> I do what, what are you talking about? What? Ten minutes of stand up? You don't pay attention to the emails. Just, just, just oh, mind your own. All right. Sorry. So may may the the may uh, the may you walk a thousand miles and may the wind always be at your back, but may you always have good whiskey in your sack. There you go. I, like I just that. made that up, but uh, you know, there we go. That works because right. I ain't working a thousand miles, but I will drink whiskey. So, mm -hmm. all right, cheers, cheers, cheers. Right. Don't go anywhere. Booze, da booze dancing TV does it again. Wait, wait, take, wait. Let's wave to Lee. Bye, Lee. Thanks for coming in. Bye, Lee. Tell a friend. Roger's the best. Very nice. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. One more. Boom. Big all thumbs right. up, Roger. Cool. Big thumbs I was, up. Wait, don't go. I mean, never think, I want to get a picture of this. I always. No, I'm saying. Things. I'm saying. I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm not going anywhere. Here we go. Got it. Big smiles. All right. Okay. Cheers, folks. Don't go. Now we're here. Right. <laughs>